Welcome back to Bad Movies Rule, the worst movie podcast ever recorded. And today, straight from the shoe store, we got Mr. Mel Vandy. And straight from his offices over at BMR headquarters, the mayor is in session. The dirt farmer himself has crawled across the alley and is joining us today. Give it up for Mr. Clint Bush. And, and uh, Kurt's here, too. Yeah, Kurt's at the, uh, the kid table. What's hey, up? guys. That's enough. Hey, how, how are you? Good. Uh, fine. Good. Thanks. Go back to your nuggies. <laughs> so far you brought away. some coloring books in, I see. I did. What Good. kind are they? I got the highlights, the hidden pictures. Oh, that's all we needed to okay. know. So I can... All right. <laughs> Good. Keep... Why, Why are, are you yelling? Because <laughs> uh, Use you your inside so voice. far away. <laughs> yeah, use your inside voice. Yeah, that's by design. Sorry, guys. Today, guys, Thank we got a, uh, a deadly cartel drug lord speeds towards the border with a small town sheriff to stop him. But what he didn't know is that that sheriff was Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah, was. and that he was on Bad Movies Rule. Yeah. And this movie every, was uh, sponsored by Chevrolet. That's right. <laughs> it was. He's, he's been on Bad Movies Rule every week for like 97 he has, he has. weeks now. He, yeah. Well, I met more Gabriel Cortez didn't know he was on Bad oh, Movies Rule, no. but Arnold Who? lives on Bad Movies yeah, Rule. Yeah, he's here all the time. <laughs> For sure. What's up, guys? Are we all having a good Saturday? It's a great Saturday. Oh, awesome. Saturday? Yeah, well, technically, while we're recording this. Although, it's, wait, it's Friday because oh. we just released it. Friday. Hey, guys, oh, having yeah. a good Friday? Friday? Yeah, Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, great Friday. <laughs> Racing tonight. Hey. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, let's get straight into the vitals. We're talking about The Last Stand from 2013. Not all that long ago, 10 years. Movie was directed by... Ji Woon Kim. His American directorial debut. And finale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's yeah. from South Korea. If you look at his filmography, lots of movies rated in the sevens on IMDb. So really good stuff. This isn't, it's not poorly rated. It, you know, we'll get to that. But this was the only one he did in America. He went straight back to making movies in South Korea, and he's never been back to make an American film. Which Said, is, screw this, I'm out of here. <laughs> right. Which is unfortunate because, yeah. my gosh, I... Well, cat's out of the bag. I like this one. Apparently he could. This is what I don't understand about foreign language, so forgive me. It said he could understand English, but he couldn't speak it. So he had to have a translator there to communicate with the actors and the crew and everything. Si, senor. So how can you understand a language, but you can't speak it? It's it, it's actually a, a, a kind of a big thing. Is you, it really? Yeah. If you listen, I, I can understand a lot more Spanish than I can translate on the fly. Okay. So it's it's one of those things that just happens. All right. Maybe he just didn't like the hassle of coming over here. And, I mean, I don't know why. I don't think... They blacklisted him or anything because the no. movie made its money back once yeah. it hit DVD and looked, stuff. So. Looked at it and said, eh, been there, done that. I'm going to stay in South Korea. Yeah, fine. yeah, but the numbers weren't so great. Written by... Not right off the bat. Not off the bat, no. no. The movie was written by Andrew Knauer. Now, Andrew has only written four or five things. Since then, he's actually done two things recently. Senior Year, which was a Netflix movie with Rebel Wilson where she went back to high school or something. Sounds great. It didn't really get great reviews. And then he made a next movie. Week. He, bad movie. No, <laughs> this other one maybe next week because this other one he made I added to the list. It starred Scott Atkins and Dolph Lundgren. Oh, and it's called Castle Falls, and it looked like the perfect movie. It's a five point two on IMDb. Oh yeah, and I'm like, we're doing it. Oh, so we can drop there. that into the force for sure. Is Rebel we Wilson could. related to Olson? O, o, what's I, his name? I, I, Owen I, I, Wilson. I, 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 uh, uh, are they related? I don't know. I don't uh, know what you're talking about. A few too many kitty cocktails going. <laughs> Did you show up to the kids' table drunk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quit Perfect. sipping dad's beers. <laughs> Seriously. That's why you didn't have any in the refrigerator. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, movie starred Arnold Schwarzenegger, Forrest Whitaker, Johnny Knoxville, Jamie Alexander, and a whole slew of other people that we'll get to as we go through. Was this his uh, first Good movie Lord. back well, got after, so much. The, uh, after the governor? The governor? Do you even know what you're talking about? Yeah, he was the governor of California, right? He, he was. The governor of California. Yes. And then is this his first movie back? Yes. We were going to get to that, but let's just talk about it now. Oh, thanks. Uh, so <laughs> now Glad that we, I brought uh, it up. Now that we've spoiled that, <laughs> yeah. uh, this was Schwarzenegger's first movie back. <laughs> After, hey, uh, after, after, being, after the governor, being governor. I guarantee he hasn't found a single picture in his highlights. I found a jelly bean. <laughs> <laughs> Found one so far. Well, don't flick it. Okay. The uh, Yes, so Arnold had taken about 10 years off. His final movie before becoming governor, outside of the odd cameo here and there, was 2003's Terminator 3. He then made a couple cameos, like in Expendables and things like that. But this, 10 years later, 2013, was his first leading role. I'm back, you know, done being yeah. the governor. We're going back to making movies. This was it for him. Yeah, absolutely. 
The movie had a budget of $45 million. The box office was only $48 million, so it lost $20 million. Yep. But it did make its money back with uh, DVD sales and stuff. So Yeah, I mean... Uh, the movie, all right, yeah, it wasn't a bomb, okay? So yeah. initially it didn't freaking box office, but there's got to be a point where we look at box offices differently in the world of streaming now where you get so much extra yeah. on the contracts and stuff. When we but how did that. they get this thing done for $45 right. million? Yeah. Dollars? Yeah. Right. With the people that are in it, there's a mm-hmm. couple of people that at least commanded yep. several million dollars right off the top. <laughs> yes. I mean, the number of squibs, the... Uh, the cars. The cars, the cars. just... Ha- well, the cars were given to them. Those were probably Yeah, free. but they wrecked... Yeah. Well, I don't want to get into No, that. right, but cars were wrecked. We can say that, yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They <laughs> cars were the wrecked. Cars. But, like, <laughs> that is accurate. The, the weaponry, like, just for the shot, you know, that stuff yeah. has to be owned at some point, or at least rented. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, I was like, sure. that's, there's some good stuff in this movie. Yeah, I don't think Arnold was probably pulling the $20 million salary no. he used to, but... But he's still worth a couple still, million. For sure, for sure. No, but even, like, 20... 2013 i mean i felt like we talked about this a few shows back where like action movies just came to a point where they weren't a thing really in theaters anymore no mostly now unless you're mission impossible or john wick you're you're going straight to streaming right. if you're an action movie or tyler perry well no i meant does he make action movies I mean, there's action in them. <laughs> Medea does some stuff. I don't Medea know. Medea went to prison. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> there's some action going on in prison. Medea goes to war. If, uh, <laughs> No? <laughs> no, no. You're thinking of Ernest. Oh, Ernest oh. goes to war. Ernest goes to war. Gotcha. Ernest rides again. Whatever. All right. The movie currently sits. And you look at these ratings. You think, what? Well, what are we doing? It's six point yeah. three on IMDb, which is in the the judgment call Quarter range. Sixty one percent on Rotten Tomatoes, so just barely fresh, with sixty being the cutoff. Weak spy. So this is actually the first movie that qualifies solely based on the audience score, which is rotten at fifty three. The audience doesn't know anything <laughs> about movies. The, the audience, audience isn't always right. The audience no. doesn't know what they want. The What's interesting is no idea what they like. Right. A lot of exactly. times the audience score is higher than the critic score, but in it this is, case... Well, I mean, on the stuff we see anyway. Yes, it's yep. reversed, so I was a little bit surprised by that. So the audience says it's bad, or half of them don't like it. They're split. We're going to determine, because yeah. what the show is, for those of you who've never listened, we are primarily a roast show. We'll roast the movies, even the ones that we love, but at the end, we're going to try and d- decide... Is it actually a bad movie? Is it a good movie and everyone's just wrong? Or was it, yeah, maybe objectively bad, but we enjoyed it, so it's a bad movie that rules? We'll take you through the whole thing, literally scene by scene, and at the end we'll try and come to some kind of conclusion. We'll give some awards out to the movie. Some actors that maybe don't want to win some awards will win some of those awards, and then we'll uh, we'll ultimately see if this is a bad movie that rules. You know what's great, though? Yeah. Since Clint's here, we have our 16-point scale we get to You're use You're right. Today. That's true. That's true. Yes. So yeah. those are only three of 16 options. I want to get a Rolodex sound to put in here when it's time for you to pick and just go, go brrr, like your yeah. finger. We've we got to get a wheel. Just, well, we got to have a oh, wheel. One time I had the pop matic bubble. Right. 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 I had right. the different uh, Oh, that's stuff. yeah. We, we can do that, do that yeah. too. Anything. That. You guys ready to dive into the plot on this thing? Yes. Well, let's go. Do we got any scissors in here? No. Um, Shut up. I, I, bring your own. <laughs> strange. Stickers. I was literally trying to think. There's just stickers in this up. book. You need the stickers? Yeah, you got to put stickers just where you find the, the hidden. Just look at the drawing. There's stickers. Just peel them off. You, you don't know, need yeah. scissors. Or we could just. By page. Wow. Okay. We could just move on and just act like he's not even there. It's true. All right, Turn so just to off. give you guys I'm an not idea. Joe. <laughs> I don't want to do that. We're not at that point yet. If he reaches Joe territory, we'll mute his mic. Okay. I do find it odd that this yeah. is like the first movie I think that I agree with the critics. Isn't that isn't and interesting? Not the audience. audience. Yeah. Like usually when the critics say something is good and the audience doesn't like it, it is trash propaganda. Right. Well, that's what they're paid to say. <laughs> oh, you're one of those paid critics guys? They they are paid to, they're they're sponsored they're by the publication. Paid for the oh, absolutely. For sure. All right. Well, see, I'm not I'm not disputing that. I just, you know, I don't know. Just to give you guys a rough synopsis of the movie so you understand what we're getting into here, some context, the basic plot of this is very simple. Drug cartel leader makes a run to Mexico in a super fast car. The town at the border crossing is sheriffed by Arnold Schwarzenegger. What else do you need to know? That's, that's basically that's the it. plot. That's, yeah, <laughs> means asses in the seats right there. Right. Right there. It should have been. <laughs> it should wait, Way more people. But this is the thing. Ten years went by, right? And I'm right. like, yeah. Arnold used to, you put his name on the poster and you were going to put butts in the seats, right? Yep. And 10 years went by. I was at the theater. I went to see this in the theater. In fact, this is the first time I've seen it since then. I hadn't rewatched it yet. 
And I remember, well, I'll get into that at the end, kind of my complicated feelings about the movie, but let's get through it right now. The movie opens up with a cop on the side of a road in the dark, hanging out by himself, farting around. Radar donuts. (laughs) Radar eating donuts. When all of a sudden, a jet plane flies past the car, or so he thinks. Sure, let's go with that. (laughs) 197 miles an hour on his radar gun. By the time he looks up at the gun, whatever that was is four miles away. Well, he, he took his, uh, he turned his headlights off coming up. So like, hey, this cop is sitting in a dark car eating some donuts. How did this guy who stole this car know to shut off his headlights because he's going to go by a cop? Yeah, I don't know. Plot point. Oh. Well, we find out later that the car has night vision. Yes. Well, right? yeah. Also. So yes. maybe that was what he did. But we'll find out more about the car as we get into it. But yeah, so the guy radios in and says, uh, can somebody call the FAA. Some idiot's flying a jet around here with no lights on. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Like, that's, that's he just the says, only explanation he could come up with, 197 yeah. he miles He wasn't going to go chase after I, it. I, I got to <laughs> tell you right now. He just donuts. <laughs> that this car that we find out is a ZR, or ZR1, ZR1 yeah. uh, Corvette. Mm-hmm. This car will make some noise. It's souped up. <laughs> and it drove right by the side of the, you're not that's not a jet. Hey. No. It's piston powered 100%. There's no and it's souped jet up noise to 100 here. or uh, to 1000 1000 yeah. horsepower. horsepower. Yes. This so, thing is making glorious yeah, supercharger right. and V8 noise on the way by. It's it whistling. Is no way it's yes. There's blow-off valves, everything. <laughs> no. This thing is going to make yeah. a lot the of noise. Turbo is spinning. With- no turbos. Supercharger. Oh, Still. Well. More to come on that as we as we get into the movie. We then go through what I call the beginning phase of the movie is the get-to-know-you phase. We have about three or four scenes where the whole point of the scene is, here's this person. Yep. Here's this person that you need to know about. Here's this person that you need to know Some about. Good 80s character building. So, yeah. And the first one right. is we meet, of course, the main character of the movie, who is Ray, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yep. Yes. The man is back. The man. He is back. The he's m- looking good. His he, shoes. Dude. Man. My Lord. He's going boating. Dude's ripped. He's going, yeah. <laughs> like, this is an old guy. He, he's this a, is old man he was Arnold. He's like 66. That's right. When you yeah. made this movie? 66 year old Arnold. He's looking good. This is the part. This is the no. point of his career oh. where I say he's entered oh. into the old man phase of, sure. of his career, you know, after being governor. Yep. He, he's made about nine or ten movies since coming back. Doesn't spit him out as quickly as he used to, but this is the old man phase. And I think Arnold's put out some good movies in this phase of his career. Sure. Starting with The Last Stand mm-hmm. here. And he goes and he meets the mayor of this small town, and so he's the sheriff of Somerton. And this mayor comes up to him, and he's giving him crap because he's not going to drive five hours to go see the big homecoming game, which is kind of explaining why the town is empty for most of this movie. <laughs> Additionally, it's like, it's not your homecoming <laughs> if you're going five hours away. <laughs> oh, I thought it's it was somebody else's. It's somebody else's. I thought yeah. it was a championship Why are they having I thought it was, the, Maybe it was, it was the a state champion. champion. It could be. Yeah, yeah, all right. Okay. I, yeah. I wasn't paying close. Still funnier. Down. Still funnier. But he basically tosses Arnold. The, so Arnold says, you're parked in a fire lane. He's got this Camaro. The mayor. Yeah. yeah right? the, the mayor is parked in this fire lane and so arnold's like move your car and you're in the fire lane and he says you know you can move it for me Ch- tosses, tosses the keys at him move it if there's a fire like how dare you schmuck this is this is Ar- arnold yeah, that's what he said freaking schwarzenegger schmuck. <laughs> schmuck and he's obviously beneath him so he just lets he catches his keys which is important later on plot Indeed. point puts them in his jacket and off the guy's F's basically to this football game along with everybody else. You know what, though? What's that? I loved that. Yeah. That whole thing. Yeah. The whole yeah. football game because it sets the the reasoning as to why the town's empty. Right. Like, yes. This Which is, is a, like perfect setup. Right. right. This is a dead little dumb town, but there's still enough buildings to make you question otherwise. Why are there only nine people here? Right. Right. And so like most of the movies yeah. we've talked about where they just don't bother to explain it, there's just no extras like... Masters of the Universe. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mention <laughs> He-Man on this one. And their Desert Heat. Lack of Desert Heat. There's no Desert at, Heat. At least they explained the fact yeah. why the town is. And they empty. had people right. there getting on buses. A football team. Yep. Little parade extras. downtown. Yeah. Good stuff. Extra budget. Two hours. So, that's right. Arnold goes in for a big omelet at Irv's Diner. We. Uh, and he sits there, and we're meeting some of the townspeople. And this is when I when I said Arnold's Arnold alarm goes off. Hold on, there's bad guys in here. Yep. Like he could just sense he them. Just, yeah. He smelt them. <laughs> He's like, you know, yeah. he, he just turns there's, over. Yeah. Yeah. There's this bad guys is in here. The moment you know he's back because he still gives the look. And I know you guys know what yep. I'm talking about. Absolutely. The look when he looks back at these guys is like, 
could just cut steel. And they right. stop and they yeah. stop they eating stop. and they yep. look across at him. Check. And he yes. looks across They're like, yeah. check. <laughs> yes. He's like, who are you guys? Why are you in here eating? <laughs> yeah. And we get to see Peter this Strawmare. Is, this yeah. is a diner. Why the hell are you eating beer? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing else in town. And he, and he there's noticed, no sir. Popeye's chicken across the <laughs> yeah. street. Why'd you stop to eat here? You're a trucker. Only, Why aren't you eating a quick trip? Diner right. in town. That's right. <laughs> and so Peter Strawmare is in here. And I think part of the reason Arnold knew he's a bad guy is because Peter plays a bad guy in every yeah. single yeah. movie he's ever Man, been in. And was it Prison Break? Prison that Break. That guy was just phenomenal. He, he was a bad guy in John Wick. He was the guy yep. who got his car back from. Oh, he yeah. was a bad guy in Minority Report. He's either yeah. transplanted yeah. his eyes for him. He's so good in most oh. that I remember. Him he in. always plays like these little character parts. He's never the lead role, but he's, he's the always bad guy. awesome. But, he's, yeah, he's, he's one of those bad guys. guys. Yeah. The yeah. only time I can remember him playing somebody that wasn't a bad guy was in Armageddon. When he's, I am Russian cosmonaut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. That was yep. him. Yeah. He's smashing with a hammer to fix it. <laughs> that's yeah, that's right. how we do it. That's the only thing, I because I racked my brain. I was like, he has he ever been a good guy? And that's the only thing I can See, and I didn't even remember that was him. Oh, no, just yeah, because yeah. of that. Right. He's always in I, these When, when I went through his IMDb, I was like, oh, yeah, he was in Armageddon. Yeah. He's been in tons of stuff. And so I was happy to see him, but Arnold's like, oh, that's Peter Stromer. He's a bad guy. Right. You know I, mean? yeah. I know him. <laughs> yeah, I know him. <laughs> this guy's about to shoot someone. I just can, I can tell. Yeah, that's true. So he's he driving. Does... No, bueno. <laughs> we no. are in Somerton, however, which yeah. is like, if you look at the map of the United States of America and you understand the highway system, yeah. this truck towing... <laughs> Automobile parts from California to yeah. New Orleans by tomorrow <laughs> should be nowhere near. Yeah, I'm glad Somerton. you said it. I'm yeah. just saying it's not a thoroughfare, right? No. So like, there's a little bit of a, you know, their story doesn't quite check. Right. So there's a little yeah. of that, right? So he and does. Was like, that's weird. He does write down their license plate yep. and ask his deputies. We were going to meet in a second here to run the plate, so he kind of knows something's going on. Then we get over and we meet those deputies oh, along, yes. with us, along with Lewis, played <laughs> yes. by Johnny Knoxville. Amazing. So, so we got Johnny Knoxville playing this kid, Lewis, who's not a deputy but wants to be. Yep. We got uh, Luis Guzman is yep. one of the deputies. Yep. He's the new Adams Family dad, right? Yep. yep. And then Jerry. Who yeah, I don't know his character. actor's name, but he the was, guy that plays um, He was the throwaway. He was the throwaway. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was in Friday Night Lights for oh, was he? the whole season. Okay. Yeah, or for four or five there seasons, you go. however long it ran. I, I started the beginning of this. We looked at it. We saw Johnny take the shot. And my wife yeah. is actually still watching the movie with me at yeah, this so time. Yeah, so just so you know what's happening, they're, they're, they've got a big giant handgun, and they're shooting a side of beef. Right. Yeah, like a Model 500. Yeah. Right. And they're shooting at they're a side of They're farting around at his yeah, property. Yeah, playing around. Yeah. He shoots it. Big chunk of beef flies, flies back. Everywhere. Actually, no, Guzman everywhere. Shot it, didn't yeah. he? Uh, the first time I think it was Johnny, and Johnny, it landed, yeah, and it landed on yeah, Louis. Yeah, yeah, it Lewis. Right. everywhere. Lewis. Yeah, Lewis. Ran it on yes. his Lewis, head. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, but like now, the guy John or new Jerry, guy, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry wants who's to a, shoot this. Who's thing. a cop? He's an actual <laughs> yeah, police an actual, officer here. Actual deputy. And I'm like, oh, he's gonna hit himself in the face with that. I've <laughs> shot this gun before. You know, we've rented it. Oh, I, you can oh, yeah, see it the a mile outdoors. Away that so what? It was awesome. What gun is it? Because it's it's huge. a Model 500. Yeah. Okay. With long barrel Model 500 too on okay. top of it. So like, he takes this shot. Boom! Right to the <laughs> face. The way Bloody he was nose. Kicks back. Oh, was so gonna kick good. Back in his face. This yeah. is just. It was amazing. I saw it in advance, and it was just great to watch the second time on screen. You know. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm sure this happens. I don't think this is an exaggeration at all. I'm sure people there's guns with enough kickback where if you don't hold them the right way, they're absolutely going to fly back and hit you in the face. And there's there's videos of people shooting yes. stuff like this where it actually just flips out of their hand. But the best part is right. his recovery, where he takes like two more <laughs> shots yep. into the freaking stratosphere, like legitimately. <laughs> oh my God, he's holding his face with one hand. Two shots yeah. go off, and he's pointing the thing straight he's at Johnny it Knoxville. All over. Well, I know, and I uh, saw this. I'm like. <laughs> I'm, I, I know Mel's going to be furious because I've gone shooting with Mel before and he's all like crazy about, you know, gun safety. Gun safety. And so he's just whipping around with the gun and everybody's ducking and diving out of the way. Mel is not crazy about gun safety. Yeah. Mel is reasonable. No, no, I shouldn't about say crazy. Gun safety. But that, since that's my only experience ever yes. shooting is with him, I immediately heard him in my head freaking out. Oh, yes. So. I'll tell you what, though, yeah. Lewis, yeah. he's my spirit animal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is Mel approved. <laughs> okay. Nice. Well, Ray shows up obviously, and he's like, "Why are two of my de two of my two, two thirds? <clears throat> two sorry. thirds? Why are two thirds of my force out here shooting rockets at a side of beef? Because <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, there ain't nothing going on with everything. Better yeah, than anything town, going you know, on. Yeah. Kind of That's right. And we find out Lu uh, Lewis has this firearm and historic weaponry museum. Yes, the Dinkum Firearm and Historic <laughs> Weaponry Museum. <laughs> it's open, open every open third Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, <laughs> from noon to <laughs> two. Bring <laughs> your family. Bring the whole family. Bring the whole family. That's right. 
<laughs> and uh, so this is kind of our introduction to them. And he goes, let me shoot that before I write you a citation. And he, you get the straight armed Arnold. No right? kickback no, at yeah. all. Kick, not. No nothing. It's like, yes, this is it. That, this is the movie I've know, been that, wanting that to that see. The gun is getting kicked back. That's what happened. <laughs> Arnold just. The gun gets kicked back, not right. Arnold. Oh, yeah. dude. This is, the, this is the moment right there. We are yes. literally, what, about seven minutes yes, into this movie. Yeah, not even that far into it. Yet. We're seven minutes in, and I'm like, oh, this is the best yes. movie. Movie I've ever watched for this podcast <laughs> ever. In, this is including my boy right here, Vanilla Ice. I'm sorry. Oh, dude. cool as ice. Oh, Doesn't sorry, even my guy. Oh, cool as ice. All right. Well, we meet Sarah. She's the th other one third of the deputies. So we find there's only three. Yeah, she's all right. Sarah that's played Miss Sif, right? Yeah, that's Sif, right? That's Jamie Alexander who played Sif and Thor. And I, she was actually almost Wonder Woman. She had filmed a pilot, really, for a Wonder Woman TV show. And it just never happened. I so think I think she would have been, been awesome. Is that the one with pants? Maybe. That was the Wonder Woman with pants. That might have been the pants. Pant suit? Wonder Woman. Yeah, no wonder it didn't work. <laughs> I don't know. I'll explain to you when you're older why that's uh, not as good. What? Uh, all right. So Sarah, has. she's back at the station. She's locked up her boyfriend. We meet Frank. And Frank conveniently serves up his backstory. Well, just because I served in Iraq and I'm such a great, awesome soldier, I can't have a few beers or whatever he says. Yeah. I'm like, thanks. Real yeah. subtle way to let us know you can fight and handle yourself. Right. This <laughs> information is going to be useful in 12 That's minutes. Right. Frank the tank. <laughs> <laughs> She's mad at him. They're they're on again. They're off again. We get the sense, you know, from from the scene. Um, we also get a little bit of Arnie's backstory. We find out that he was a narcotics cop back in L.A. Yep. Yep. And so he kind of came here to relax and chill out after that experience. All right. We're almost through the introductory scenes. The next one is the uh, we go to the bad guy farm, what I thought was the bad guy farm before yes. I realized. When the henchmen start henching. That's right. Dude, all of these guys, <laughs> these mercenaries, all straight out of central casting. Yep. Yep. You got the man bun guys. You got the lines shaved into the head dudes. You got the guy with no shirt on with the tats on his yep. abdomen. I'm like. Perfect casting for these guys. They all looked phenomenal. Give me a number seven of bad guys. <laughs> I know, seriously, Just with a side order of five. Menu. Okay, I'll take uh, I'll take uh, lines and yeah. a head guy. Give me a man bun guy. <laughs> Need a ripped guy. Need a ripped guy. Uh, Need the guy with the braided goatee. Yeah, braided goatee. Okay, we got them all. <laughs> things. One guy, guy that knows ninjutsu. <laughs> that, that'll right. be fifty nine ninety five. So Thank the you. bad guys want to set up on this farm because they were trying to build. Essentially, they're there in advance of this cartel member to build an assault bridge over a shallow valley to get into Mexico. Yep. And so they go to try to negotiate with the farmer. We don't quite know that yet, but no. we're about to. Yes, yeah. we're about yep. to. We're about to. He goes to negotiate with this farmer, the, played by Harry Dean Stanton in a little cameo, which I was thrilled to see him. If you guys don't remember Harry Dean Stanton, he was in the original Alien movie. Oh, uh, yeah. And yeah. he was, oh, there was a movie in, uh, in 1984 called Paris, Texas. It's a little bit of a slow burn, but it's a really good. Great guy. He, he played straight up perfect farmer. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. He was it, great. Perfect, crusty farmer, farmer right. man. Right. Like, he, Peter Stromer is like, why don't you put that gun away? We're just talking. He's like, we're done talking. Boom. And like shoots. Which is yeah. great. Right, <laughs> at the, right, shot at his, right into the ground in yep. front of his feet, <laughs> you know, right gravel toes, spray. Yeah. Yeah. Starts clearing his face. <laughs> It was great, and then obviously one of the bro dudes over there uh, just just like sniped, him. Wow. Just sniped, sniped them. them. Sniped you don't them. take the silver, you get the brass. That's right. Yep. That's right. So sadly, the farmer is killed, and they've taken over the farm. And now we're into our final phase of knowing all the characters. We get introduced to the FBI and Forrest Whitaker. And, and the, Forrest Whitaker's eye. And the British machine. <laughs> you had to say it. <laughs> all right. It's a separate character. Okay. It's a separate uh character. <laughs> where half the budget went. Um, <laughs> why don't they just CGI the thing? <laughs> we have the technology to fix Forrest Whitaker's eye at this point. We have the technology. We can do it. It's who Forrest Whitaker is. I'm you just, pay for obviously. Forrest I mean, Whitaker. would you pay yeah. to fix you know, Stallone's lip? No, I, it's all in jest, obviously. No, no, no. He it's, is uh, amazing. He's, he's great. He does a fantastic job at I hate his Again. character in this movie, but I love Forrest yeah, Whitaker. Yeah, I love Forrest Whitaker. So, I think we're supposed to hate his character. Forrest Whitaker, yeah. they're moving. I, probably, but. He, they do the rally. They got all these agents there. Like, all right, we're moving this. He, in four to five seconds. Deadly cartel master of all time. And he just Pablo him Escobar. To, yeah, since Pablo Escobar. Since Pablo. Gabriel Cortez. Who? Nailed exactly. it. Yeah. And so they're going to move Never this guy. To some supermax prison from wherever he is now. Oh, he's, he's going, going to, to death federal row. death row. Yeah. Federal death federal row. Death there row. you go. From Las Vegas at three in the morning. At three in the morning. The best time. To we move don't want to people prison. to know. That's when you move. People. Well, in the biggest cell for this guy, like they keep his face in all the way through. 
And you're like, <laughs> I don't even know who this guy is. I, is I didn't famous? catch half that. It cut out. I'm sorry. Yeah, it so, totally cut out. <laughs> no, we don't know who he is. <laughs> Here's how, here's how the, we'll do this in short order, but here's how they break him out of this prison escape. They, they use an iPad to drive a magnet crane. Yeah. Right? yeah where did, uh, that's what I wanted to know. Where did the, the uh, electromagnet come from? Well, like, the you don't junkyard. typically have those um, at they, job sites. Well, they probably stuff. brought that. You know, the crane uh, was probably up have. doing a job. Brought in the back of their pickup truck. Yeah, yeah and it, it was just, yeah. okay. How do you get it unstuck from the pickup they, truck? They, you turn it off. Oh. oh, it turns on and yeah. off? Well, well that would suck if it was just That's always on. Yeah. You'd be like, well, we can't, we're not getting well, that on this truck. That, we they, need they, another they, magnet they, they to pick up the magnet. They put in the back of their Silverado that they rolled up in. They don't actually drive the Silverado. They yeah. just mount it on the front, and then when somebody goes by, they turn it on. Oh, got it. All right. So they, they pick up the van, the SWAT van that Gabriel Cortez is in, and when that happens, Cortez starts to assault, assault, assault the, the guy FBI that's agent. in yep. the van with him, and they're able to pick up this van and put it on top of the parking garage. Yep. And by the time they all on foot have to get up to the top, they're able to get out and zip line across the street to another building. Yeah, which and is they did fun. not when they did not use the Condor Man. They didn't rocket. No, they, the, yeah. <laughs> zip this is another one of those moments. They see Ford the door open on or shape charged. Yeah, I don't know what they use, but they shape yeah. charged the door open on this armored personnel transport yep. van that they've got. Right, and I'm like, oh, he better be hiding behind the dead freaking guard in there. <laughs> he was open the door. He's hiding behind the dead guard. I'm like this is my movie. I love it. Come on. Yeah, no, that scene when that when they blew the door, I was like, that seems like anybody inside would be injured after that. Yeah, yep. that was a pretty violent explosion. I'm on it. I was like, yes, <laughs> but it was good. They zip line across the street while they're while the feds are coming up the parking garage. By the time they realize that there was a zip line, they've changed clothes. Cortez is now in a suit. They get downstairs of that building. They are they do run into two agents. Release the drones, McKay, and Richards. And Agent McKay is is executed, and Richards is taken captive as a prisoner. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. At, <laughs> at the same time, talk about how convoluted this plan was. Yeah. They've got all these guys dressed in orange. Droned up. Ready to go to just, just run in around. different directions. Yep. yep. They bring in like 15 dudes for questioning, <laughs> you know, <laughs> at the end. We well, only talked to the one guy who's not wearing an orange right jail, jail jumpsuit. Suit, this yeah. is the only guy who's actually in some like, like soccer track kit, you know? Right. Yeah, soccer track suit. <laughs> That's quite the plan, man. You get all these orange runners. You're zip lining. You're getting a magnet crane. That's pretty involved. It was an impressive, uh, yeah. impressive escape. Well, and How? if you're gonna if you're gonna do a middle of the night stealth mode transport on somebody, there is no better way to do it than on a dead, empty street with 47 cars. <laughs> That's how you low key move something. I got you. I just want to know how they found that many fans of Dutch international well, soccer. When you look at the room, in he Vegas. was the only one yeah, in the, the only one Dutch yeah, in Vegas. Everybody else yeah. was actually in a jumpsuit. Yeah, they pulled this guy to interrogate one of the one of the decoy runners, and he turns out he's just a huge Dutch soccer fan, yeah. late night jogging enthusiast. Right? I mean, right. What, what do you who do? Who does four a.m.? It's Las Vegas. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing at four a.m.? So Whitaker, for Forrest Whitaker's pissed because now. He's essentially gotten away and he's gone. They get back into FBI headquarters and they're starting to look at the videotapes and everything. And they see this car that he's in. And like, oh, I don't know anything about. Get the Go, car get guy. Mitchell. Can we get Clint Bush over here, please? That's basically what they did. <laughs> so he like, knows cars. He knows stuff about cars. We get Clint over. Here. Clint's like, oh yeah, that's a that's a ZR1. But it was just stolen from the uh, LA Auto Show. Well, right. they week, didn't. Two days like, ago. what's that? Well, it's a Corvette. But it was modified Souped from 766 horsepower. horsepower up to a thousand. Which is, but this is a real thing. It's legit. It is. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. legit, right? Not, not legit. the thousand or, or not the thousand. Oh, no, but sure I guess oh, I guess sure. you can. It's absolutely yeah. capable. You, yeah. What I what I read was that they actually was it was a souped up ZR1 souped up by Hennessy Racing. Yeah. Yep. And oh. I was like, oh, I thought it was just made up. No, no, no. That's, you mumbo that's jumbo. Just like At least they, they weren't souped up on Hennessy. They soup up the Cobra Mustang. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, same different, same thing. It's like it's like it's death on wheels, and and he has uh, that thing. Got a been. psychopath in a Batmobile. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. He's got this great line about how great we got a psycho in the Batmobile. That's fantastic. They must have been armored too. So then he goes, all right, well, get some choppers, right? And it's like, no, it's faster than any chopper, which is a lie, the but it's <laughs> true. It's a true lie. <laughs> There are helicopters Speaking faster, of Arnold, it's a but not line. that many. No. Yeah, see? <laughs> and <Ooh>. Tom Arnold. <laughs> That's right. Nice. Oh, my God. I made so it this worse. Is, this is what I read about this, because we had a conversation, and I was like, I kind of read. So apparently, it's a, a standard Eurocopter can travel 
up to 280 miles an hour. We talking an EC 145 or 135? I don't know. You know, for a shoe store person, you know an uh, awful lot about this kind of stuff. I wonder sometimes if you're really an undercover cop. So, so they say that so it could correct. travel comfortably to 150 at miles. 280 miles an hour is what uh, comfortably at 280. So an adapted FBI chopper should have no problem keeping up. Is that true? Uh, that was a that was a Huey or was that a Bell? I don't know. Uh, most, so. most regular helicopters we see, a regular police helicopter, uh, flight for life, stuff like that, 140, 150 miles an hour ish. Okay. Uh, for a while there, 225 miles an hour was the record till up till about seven years ago. Now yeah. there's like a, a, a Sikorsky or whatever. Uh, Sikorsky. Sikorsky. That's the one. Yeah. It was so something the, like that. The top that's speed. Like 239 or 299 miles an hour. And the top speed of this car is 200 miles an hour. Or above. Yeah. Sim- or above. But not, not tons above, but yeah. Okay. There. The real one did 212. They yeah. were saying in the sh- in the show or in the movie that this was supposed to do 250 plus. Right, but I'd it's, be surprised you're talking about 200. But right, yes, 200 plus for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we have the the first the first the first trope. First of, well, the first one that we're calling out. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say we had. We oh, had, lots of tropes. <laughs> put, put 15 points on That's the board right. for tropes. All right. <laughs> you can count the tropes. Hit the go ahead, hit the red button there. We're, we're up to like we 37. No, we've got ones we're we're called out so one. far. Uh, right. One official. One official. So one official. we get the bad guy radios, the good guy on the radio. To, hey, don't mess with me, man. Okay? Just leave me alone. You mess with me and this agent's going to die. Right? Like they have yep. in every So much for movie. blowing it up. And so much for blowing it up. They can't even blow it up now. And this weird thing happened. He's on his cell phone, but it's also a speaker throughout the entire FBI yeah. headquarters. Yep. I'm like, well, you've had your cell phone, and it's between all of our headphones they, here. They That's just true. Bluetoothed it in. They Bluetoothed yeah. it in. Yeah, Bluetoothed it in. So they set up this roadblock. This is the first thing that they're going to do. They're going to set up a roadblock, and they've got, I don't know, five or six cop cars. Cops on the other side of the cop cars with shotguns and their pistols drawn out. Here comes the supercar coming up towards this roadblock like there's no way nothing force whitaker who's just angry the entire movie he's angry the whole movie the whole movie he yells into a phone that's his whole part is he's yelling into phone he's just yelling at something okay. the whole movie he's yelling in a phone that nothing gets through nothing gets through okay all right lies. got it <laughs> lies and slander these two vans start ro- or suvs whatever start rolling up to this roadblock and Every opening in this car where a guy could have come out with a gun, somebody comes out yep. with the the ceiling, the window. Like somebody Back came window. out from under the hood. Like yeah. there was somebody with a gun. Was a guy in the grill? <laughs> in the grill. It was guy like strapped the, underneath it. <laughs> it was like the, the SUV front. had Taco Bell, but it was bullets. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's a guy strapped underneath. underneath. Bright lights and just laying right. lead. Just right. and <laughs> they just light up this roadblock. I mean, cops. About 19 cops get killed before one cop goes, fall back. Right. These <laughs> bullet like That hits. wasn't their initial. Like they see these two armored cars coming yeah. with guys owed every orifice of it <laughs> with guns, like heavy automatic guns. Right. And they're like. The muzzle pew, flash pew, is like huge. And they're right. And they're and then Off like go. three quarters of the force. Okay, fall back. Time to fall back, guys. Let's go. <laughs> the, these guys are shooting the hell out of this thing. Everything is awesome. My question is. Yeah. If you're so easily able to shoot through the first side of a car, right? Yeah. Why does the bullet not go through the interior and the other side of the car more easily? We can just hide well, behind cars? Well, I mean, it does. Yeah. I, I'm just going to tell you, yeah. it, it does. I'm pretty sure we've tested this. Uh, so the only thing, no comment. If, the if you don't have that, plot armor, then it does. <laughs> right. If you have plot armor, then... The first thing else I remembered was, you guys remember back in the day that Bank of America robbery where those dudes in head-to-toe and body armor robbed that Bank oh, of America yeah, yeah. in Los yeah, yeah. Angeles? Yeah. And they lit up, they had these like armor-piercing rounds and yep. stuff, and they lit up this car and all these people in the parking lot, and this cop and this other person survived by hiding against the wheel on the other side yeah. of well, the car. Engine block, wheel, engine block, all, the all that stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But if they, had door just hid, door. if they just hid through the other side of the car, probably not. Yeah, right. So if you're going to... If you're ever in that situation where you're hiding from gunfire, hide behind the wheel yes. of the car. And even that's not guaranteed that you're not right. going to get shot. Engine block. <laughs> engine. You want right. the engine portion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not hide on the other side of the battery in a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> well, you even got Kurt to laugh over there. Yeah. 
<laughs> not sponsored by Tesla. Sorry. Uh, electric yes. car. But well, Elon Musk, if you'd like to sponsor the program, <laughs> uh, feel free. That's right. And after these two guys light up this this roadblock, a, another car with a cow catcher. Yeah, they throw some <laughs> chunkers big, and a big cow plow, catcher on the big old freaking dump truck, truck thing. Yeah. Oh, well, that's so right. It was a good. dump truck with a big plow on the front, and it plows through this roadblock. They got everything yeah, they needed. Just Usually tosses people are, the cars out of the way. Yeah. Usually people are plowing dump trucks as opposed to the other way around. <laughs> oh, it's true. And uh, and then at this point, Gabriel and his Corvette are able to just sail right through the roadblock. Yeah. Yep. Every, no problem. Every bullet shot hit. The spray, the over overdone squib. I mean, yeah. it, yeah. it wasn't Django Unchained, but if you remember that one with just the actual overkill blood, it was like halfway yeah. there. It was just fantastic. I Again, it was great. action movie for real action movie. Yeah. Forrest Whitaker is still mad at his cell phone and this microphone that he's talking into and he's like stay with him and the chopper's like oh we're staying on him and that point he turns his lights off goes to night vision mode now you can see through a monitor at night it's stop cortez stops the car the chopper loses it and then he floors it and gets away from the chopper. Yep. for because for whatever reason they don't know how helicopters work so all right <laughs> we're trying to find something that's on the road most likely because we've got desert expanse on the sides and a road and a hot rod corvette all right the yeah, corvette is going to most four. likely be on the road when the option exists right he steps on the brakes. They go flying by. He's like, oh, we're going to circle around and find him. And instead of doing the helicopter -y thing of just turning around while still looking at the road with the light, he actually circles off into the or, field and comes back or around. Or just hovering there? It's I like, mean, what is the problem here? And then Cortez right. just poof, gone. He's halfway by. And then they're searching. Yeah. They get back on the road. They're searching the Behind desert yeah. Yeah. on either side. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's halfway to Summerton by this point, yeah. for sure. And so Fortis Whitaker gets so mad, he, he literally starts to punch his microphone. What do you mean he's gone? Find him! And he hits his microphone, gets into a fight with it. There's a point. <laughs> like <laughs> somebody's microphone, microphone kicks his back. ass, fucks up his eye. <laughs> <laughs> But like, he pops his eye straight. Um, no, so it's his other eye. Just at one point, they say, "Oh, he'll be there in forty. He'll be at the border in forty-five minutes." You know what I mean? Oh, and the timeline is one of the yeah. most messed up things yeah, about the that. That's the one way part of the timeline. Is like, what the hell? You know, right. like forty-five minutes. He'll be at the border at that speed. Right. It takes like. I don't know, seven, eight hours. No, for no, sure. It goes like into the late hours. afternoon. Yeah. But no, there's a point been... even later on when they get in the in the jet and they're like, how long till we get there? 45 minutes. Like, hold on, you just said. The whole thing is 45. 45, 45 minutes. minutes ago that it was 40. And so, yeah, the one the one gripe I had about the movie was the timeline was definitely not consistent. And there was still consistent. an hour and a half left in the movie. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. consistent at all. But they, that's something I can forgive because it's just like. I mean, but that's know. the thing. How lo how far is it from Vegas to the border? Because I don't they know. left Vegas Four five 45 hours. minutes at 200 miles an hour. Right. You know, you're. Just be consistent. Oh, great. Now we're going back to like third grade math. If a train leaves Buffalo at <laughs> two thirty in the third afternoon, grade math, Arnold did you do is that coming one, in the other right. direction at sorry what fifty five miles an hour. What'd you ask? In third grade, do they do those the, the math problems for you? If an if a drug lord is leaving Vegas in a supercar at four o'clock. Oh in the no morning? no no, that was like fourth grade. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, he yeah, doesn't yeah. know yet. Doesn't I wasn't old enough yet. Okay, all right. So I've been waiting to talk about this scene because this to me is the reason I think more than any, I hated Forrest Whitaker in this movie because Forrest Whitaker, Phil, he is like his sidekick, okay? He's like the other agent, yeah. okay, who is awesome. And he has, I'm sorry that Phil has to deal with Forrest Whitaker in this movie. I felt bad for Phil. But Phil comes up, he's like, they might try to cross in Somerton. And he's like, no, that's stupid. Yeah, there's right? no crossing there. Right. You're dumb, Phil. Let's put yeah. all our agents in this one spot. But just where he's in not case. Even going. But just in case, I'll call the sheriff and I'll tell him to stay out of our way. Okay. <laughs> Don't put a, do nothing. Don't put help. a pin in this because we're going to come back to this in a minute. All right. Phil, give me your phone. I'm out of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now going back to Summerton, Ray, the sheriff, gets a call from Christy at the diner that the milk hasn't shown up. Yep, yep. farmer so guy something, didn't bring something it. going on with the farmer guy. They got to get out to the farm. Why don't well, you just call him? Well, because he doesn't have doesn't a phone. Doesn't have a phone. Stubborn. Yeah. Yeah. So the deputies, he, calls the it, he sends his deputies out there at first, right? The Sarah and Jerry go out there, and they find the farmer's body, and Ray says... Don't. It's a crime scene. Crime don't scene, touch yep. anything. And a great cut. <laughs> yeah, a great right. cut <laughs> to them touching everything and just putting it, it back. Like underrated, oh, oh, hey. like an underrated kind of comedic tone. Yeah, to some of the so scenes good. in this yeah. movie. I, I enjoyed it. it. Yes. yes. So Ray has to then come out because it's a murder, and so he comes out. He looks around, and this is when he gets that call from Forrest Whitaker. 
and he says, yeah, I can't talk to you right now, and hangs up on him. Yeah. yeah. Right? But he at least knows there's this, now Arnold knows there's this guy coming possibly towards Somerton. Right. And so he says, all right, this isn't a coincidence that these guys showed up in town, and now this guy is dead. And so he tells Sarah and Jerry to go out and look for tire look tracks, tracks in yep. the front driveway, which they do. And then like idiots, they follow them by themselves, and guess where they end up? The next plot point. Right, right, at the right, end of the tire tracks? At the end of the tire so, tracks, where all these bad guys, these 12 highly armed you know, with tactical gear and everything, are setting up this uh, bridge to bridge. go over to Mexico. And they don't Do we see it a... until they get to the end of the tire track. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, what's like all that light over there? It said, like, baseball <laughs> lights on, but no, nah, they missed it. There's <laughs> lights in the middle of the desert. What's going on right. over there? Is that, do we add a, a well, another our, town? Add one to yeah, our add corner? A trope. Add, add a trope. A trope. Right. Because this is the other thing that happens. They do call Ray. Like, hey, Ray, they're, they're out here. You know, we found him, and he goes, "Fall back." He's like, "We can't." There's work lights. Like that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was their excuse. He's there like, might Did be you union labor. Anything? There's, oh yeah, about that. Well, oh, there might oh, be what, and There might be non-union labor. <laughs> <laughs> it's Arizona. It's right to work. No oh, problem. A small, quick point before that, though. We yes. do know that Jerry was looking for some more action. We should have said he that. Did yeah. ask Arnold to not, put in a work. Not that kind of action. He wants like in California. Action. Right. Yeah. He wanted to get a job back where there's some action. I'm a little bored out here. Yeah. So Jerry's getting to get all. All the action you asked, asked He's for. He's about to get it all right, right. now. It all. And so nine dudes action. with tactical gear versus two cops, and it goes about how you think it's going to go. She's hiding behind the car, just like yeah, we right. talked about. Two cops with no Jerry gets vests, apparently. Jerry gets tagged immediately, and it's down. Right. And then they Peter Stromer is like, go to night vision. They yeah. all put their night vision lights, gear on, kill off. the lights. Jerry then, in the darkness, while he's trying to get back to the car to hide with Sarah, gets tagged again yep. in the gut. Yep. And that's all she. Well, not yet, but it's about to be all she wrote for Jerry. Oh, no. And then, all, and then the freaking bullets are raining down on Sarah, and the camera's closing in. You're like, oh, Sarah's toast because they're creeping up. She all can't fight sudden, all these guys. And all of a sudden, here comes Arnold. He's back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Terminator cop. Yeah. MF over. Just <laughs> bow. He runs Bert. this dude over. He's got one hand underhand on the steering wheel like he's driving to the yep. grocery store. Yep. <laughs> And I love how he doesn't roll the window down. He just no, elbow elbows breaks the window. window oh, so he can shoot somebody. Shotgun. Plow. Shotgun on the side. Plow. Shotgun. That's what <laughs> I'm talking about. One handed <laughs> shotgun. Running a dude Plow. over. He see, takes three of them down right there. You see why this is the greatest guy that's ever been in a movie of all time? <laughs> this dude Jerry's, took 10 years off and he rolls in here, Terminator style, yeah. rolls shotgun in, kicking owns ass. the place. <laughs> rolls in like he owns a place. I mean, he right. does. LA right. is a hell of a place, so. <laughs> <laughs> that was just his drive to work as governor. In the it was morning. so great. <laughs> well, and to top it off, I really like the blood effects. Yeah. So yeah. it was just like magnified. It helped wow. you kind of go you, like, yeah, you yes, shouldn't, yes, No, you, you shouldn't be watching that. Yeah, wait, this is Why are you rated R. R. Yeah. You shouldn't have been watching it. It was rated R? On, yeah. Man. Who's your parents? There's a moment right. where <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. she's trying to communicate with the radio, but as, as they duck for cover, she throws the radio down like in front of the car. Yeah. She runs out, grabs it for a moment, comes back and is talking, communicating with Arnold on the radio. Yeah. And then instead of hanging on to it, she throws it back in front of the car again so she can't <laughs> use it anymore for the rest of this. You know what? Her radios took a beating. They did. They just hammered. Just so Arnold's able to back up towards the car. Cover her while she grabs Jerry with his bulletproof with truck, his bulletproof course. truck. Yeah. The right. truck's getting lit yeah. up, but he's not. No. I think the bullets just bounce off of him. Wow, I think Arnold it Schwarzenegger. I'm on a. They and, don't have uh, to shoot at him. They <laughs> piss him off. He'll kill us now. Like we're right. not allowed to kill him, right? He's the star of this movie. Yeah. Right, he's a red <laughs> shirt. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> <a> red shirt. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry was the red shirt. <laughs> And they uh, they all pile in the car. I meant like football red shirt. Oh, Sorry. I got you. Okay. No, I meant the red shirt like Star Trek. Trek. Star Trek, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Red shirt. Red shirt. Sorry. <laughs> and so they get everybody in the car. They're taken off, and it goes, get me the big gun. Peter Stromer wants the big gun, which is an RPG. And yeah. they try to shoot Arnold's car, but it hits the other police car instead. Yeah, he dodges. Yeah, so he, they're able it looked to, like he did a little deke there little to deke there. get him to. All aim. in all, sorry, I'm getting excited. I got to call Oh, down. dude, I get uh, it. Arnold at What's all right, I got your nitroglycerin T800 here. over here. Well, now he's older. It's more like T8000, <laughs> but still. <laughs> all right, so Jerry, they they're, they're got away from the bad guys, and Jerry's bleeding out in the back seat. Yeah. And I thought this was actually an emotional scene. That it was did. pretty. Yeah, it was. They did a good job. And they made yeah. you, but you go back, they made you kind of care about Jerry. Right. Like he was right. the lovable doofus shooting the, the beef, getting blasted in the face with a gun. Looking yeah. for they, some more action. Looking for some more action. Did they really care about him, though? They drove him to the police station rather than a hospital. <laughs> there were probably no hospital. Everybody was town. at the game. Oh, it's true. <laughs> 
No, but look, I, I think the this is how you... The hospital shut down the game. <laughs> the police true. station was the hospital. It probably was. Civil. It probably was. It's this probably is how EMT you... and fire, too. Right. Yeah. This is how you know if a movie is working or not, right? We talked about like Iron Eagle 2 when that guy died and they tried to make a big deal out of yeah, it. And, like yeah. It didn't work because nobody cared. Nobody cared. But you know a movie's working if you have a scene like this and you actually are like, oh, man, I kind of cared sucks. that Jerry died. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's a that's a good sign. And you cared enough to know his name. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we go. This is the other half of that scene I wanted to talk about with, with Forrest Whitaker. So after this, Ray calls Forrest Whitaker back and tells him they're building a bridge. And Forrest Whitaker is such a dick to him. He's like, oh, oh. are they? Or oh, are they building a bridge? Is that what they're doing? Why don't yeah. you go patrol something? Right. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell kind of a response is that? Dude, the whole movie you've been like, we got to figure out where he's going. we got to figure out what's going on. we got to stop this guy. This dude calls you, you up told. and says, this is what's happening. Oh, oh, is, is, it, is it? Is that what they're doing? I, Just I, like, I'm not even exaggerating. Like, yeah, That's right. how he said right. it. He's like, I've seen it. Oh, did you? <laughs> oh, you saw it. They're building a bridge. Oh, yeah, oh, right. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, everybody, they're building the bridge. <laughs> it's because it's probably completely, completely unrelated. They're building the bridge, everybody. He turns everybody. to everybody else in the room. This loser says they're building a bridge. What an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> and then the next scene, he's like, yeah, let's get some satellite imagery on that. <laughs> <laughs> He does. He hangs. So Arnold hangs he up on him box he, again. He should. <laughs> Second time he hung up on him. And so even Forrest Whitaker's like, he hung up on me again. And so I don't know if it was that or what it was, but he does then turn to Phil and go, maybe we should just look. <laughs> you know, let's see. get some. Yeah. Let's get some satellite imagery. You know where he gets that? the uh, where he gets his inspiration from? There. What's that? There was this character in a uh, a movie, um, uh, Sergeant Jenkins. <laughs> He probably did watch that. Yeah, he absolutely watched you know, that. You know, and scene. that you're talking about Mummer Man. I, I am talking about the Mummer Man. Yes, yes. Sergeant <laughs> Jenkins. I mean, that was pretty much way him. before this. All right, right so there. there. So those of you who have been listening might have heard us mention this a time or two, and I guess now we can start announcing it because we're getting close. But coming up soon, our hundredth episode, we are going to be talking about the movie that we made called The Mummer Man, and and Mel here played a character in the movie called. Sergeant Jenkins. Sergeant Jenkins. Sergeant Jenkins. And Jenkins. this came out before Last Sand, so they, they kind of so ripped you off. I was, I'm, I'm just going to say. <laughs> yeah, I think they were. That's I'm right. still waiting for my pr police brutality suit to come. To <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to talk about that stuff. Oh, it's going to be so good. So they dispatch SWAT to go to Somerton. So Forrest Whitaker's like, all right, let's send some SWAT down there. If you see a bridge, build it, right. blow it up. And so they send these two vans full of SWAT guys down, and... Somehow, Cortez is behind the SWAT vans in his super Corvette. Well, they were going like 40 miles an hour, and he probably lapped them. That's probably what happened. He'd already been to Mexico and back <laughs> right. again. Right? Just, yeah. I'm too fast. This doesn't make any sense. So the way he's able to take out these two SWAT vans with his Corvette is he basically uh, gets in front of them and... Hey, just like the Mummer Man, backwards yeah, again. Yeah, yeah they yeah. stole it Ripping again. Off again. <laughs> Floors yeah. it backwards. Ripped it off again. He's flooring it in reverse in front of the vans. All right, stop. Tell me, yes. He takes this car. He is ripping. These guys are assumedly going highway speed. We're going to go 75 miles an hour. These guys are going 75 miles an hour. Yeah. He drives by them in probably fourth or third gear. Going maybe 110 or 20 just by the speed differential, flips this thing in reverse, throws it, or flips it around backwards, throws it in reverse, and floors it. And at that point, the motor explodes. <laughs> I was going to ask All you. All right. Shouldn't like literally 20,000 RPM explodes into pieces <laughs> everywhere. No. I was going to say, shouldn't the. <laughs> Transmission be all over the highway at that point. Yeah, as he I, throws it in a reverse. It was, I it was fun I though. Fathom. <laughs> I mean, it was a fun. It was, it was fun. In, <laughs> he was in four gear reverse all of a sudden. You know, I was like, oh yeah, this will still go. Hold on. You right. know what? I, I'll, I'll just uh, get ahead of the TikTok yeah. comments here. <laughs> oh. oh, it's a movie. Yes, enjoy it's a movie. It. We know. <laughs> we do enjoy it. This is why we enjoy it. I thought it's we were so looking out of a fun. window watching this really happen. Right. Right. <laughs> Was we happening? absolutely enjoyed it. Because yeah, I tried that last week with yeah. my car, and the transmission ended up all over the highway. Oh, is Kurt taking so a nap over there? It's nappy time. Yeah, is it? Was, oh, wait. Oh, do you got geese? food? Do you have food? I thought it was nappy. None your business. Fat. Do you have I mean, food? We, we can get you some. We can get you some Teddy Grahams or something. My nuggies. Okay. All right. All right. Dino nuggies are. He's nursing those Dino nuggies over there. So now he's now he's flooring it 100 miles an hour in reverse. He's going 100 miles in reverse in front of these two SWAT vans. He then takes his car. 
puts it underneath and causes one van to ramp off of his hood right awesome. into the which, other which is van. Awesome. which scratches the paint minorly right yes. yeah of a fiberglass body car at least yeah. they did that that's more than most of the movies we talk about do uh, most movies the car would still be pristine afterwards. <laughs> the right. broken fiberglass vinyl sticker that they pasted onto the front. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Maybe, maybe they had the Condor Man ramp like reinforcing <laughs> it. And so one ramped it, one SWAT van ramped into the other, and they both exploded. That and yeah. that was it for SWAT Team One and Two. SWAT's not coming. Gone. SWAT is not coming. <laughs> We're on our own. <laughs> we also find out at this point that the hostage is not a hostage. Yes. That Agent Richards, she's like, do I still have to play hostage? Can we take this right. stupid handcuff off? And so the girl, the agent, the FBI agent that's with Cortez is with Cortez. Yeah. Am I am I the only one that like saw that coming from Ab- the very beginning? I didn't, I didn't so see that I didn't. directly. I said, yeah. there's no way they know <laughs> yeah. unless one of these guys is in how to, who right. is right. Yeah. Right. So I, that's no, when we knew. You beat me on that was. one because I didn't oh, know I'd... at all. So is that a trope so. inside guy? Yeah, sure, yeah, inside guy. Yeah, inside absolutely. Guy, inside guy. I got to have a trope. All right, got so it. here we go. It's time. Now the SWAT's not coming. The FBI can't get there in time. The choppers can't keep up. It is time to take a stand at Somerton. And we have this scene. Talk about a tropey scene. The it is up to us, guys. We have to band together and do it. Right? right. And they all stand around, and we got Luis Guzman who's like, but they have we an got- army, man. Right. Right. We know a guy from the army. That's right. That, we got well, a guy. We have a guy. Is that a so. separate trope? The weenie guy that's like, oh, I'm, we're, you know, the defeatist guy. We There's always got to be a defeatist guy. We can't guy. do nothing about it. I'm out of here, do except add, for the fact that everybody's in, one? so I'm in. We could just let him go. Why we don't we just one? let him go? Oh, let's add yeah. one. Add one. Let's add one. Add one. And so Arnold does have, I like Arnold's line. He goes, I'm not going to let this guy come through our town without a fight. That's like his, That's like where I thought, okay, he's like Clint Eastwood in Grand Torino right yeah. now. Get off my lawn. <laughs> that's right. Get off my lawn. It's, I didn't come here. They could have turned sh- their eyes away, yeah, right? They could have. Right. It's, it, Arnold, it's like, it was like a principal thing, right? Yep. He's like, they're not going to use our town to come through and do this, so that's not happening. And so, of course, jail guy, Frank, who was Sarah's boyfriend, was friends with Jerry, and so when he finds out Jerry got killed, he's all emotional. Yep. Okay, give me a gun. And so he's like, we know he's an Army veteran, so he's in. They deputize he, him. He even had, like, Iraq or something tatted on yeah. Or Semper Fi he had tatted Semper on Fi, yeah. So they let Frank out of jail and deputize him. And he's like, all right, what are we going to do? They've we got some weapons. an arson. He's like, I've got an idea. Cut to we know <laughs> the idea <laughs> already. Dinkum. They come out over to Mel Vandy's house. <laughs> <laughs> Time to bring in Johnny Knoxville. Yes. And they go over to the historic weapons museum, and it must have been the third Thursday because he was open. It was open, dude. Well, between now, noon and three. And he goes, "I got two conditions. One, I want to be deputized like Frank, so that all of my <laughs> damage I do is <laughs> your fault, it's your, your fault. problem." <laughs> and actually, it was a great, uh, a great acting take from Knoxville. He, how excited he was yeah. after he oh, deputized absolutely. him that absolutely. little moment where he yeah. was like, "Oh, I can't believe it really happened." Yeah. And his second one is that he wants to hang on to uh, Georgina, the big giant yeah. uh, gun big that gun. they were firing wants before. It back. The five, what was it? The five, the model 500. Five, yeah. Model 500. He wants to hang on to that one. That's the second condition. And so they start going through the weapons in this place. Oh, And man. they're awesome. Oh, dude. Awesome. <laughs> they got the Nazi killer. The Vickers. Yeah, like Vickers. Oh. The Vickers. Every time you look around a corner, like literally I paused yeah. and I watched, not quite frame by frame, but like, okay, go a little. It's like, what do I see over there? Right. What do I see over there? Oh, so good. You well, know what I was really surprised I did at? not see one of those. Yes. In there. Yes. 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 In I there. noticed that <laughs> yes. right away. Yes. So at one point, the, yes. at one point, Luis Guzman is <laughs> yes. holding yes. this yes. exact yeah. sword. He is. And he goes, what? And Arnold's like, what are we going on the Crusades? Yeah. Right? And he's like, yeah. he goes, and you he, never know. And he, he even does, does the pose, pose and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I, yes, we have. I that. wrote that down. He did the pose with the sword. I was really surprised at all of the choices of weaponry there, and a lot of them took shotguns and yeah, right. dude, and yeah. a hunting rifle as opposed I'm, to the M twenty one. I'm going to bring a yeah. shotgun. Well, what, what do you? Right. All right, Mel. So if it's you and you know these bad guys are coming, what are you taking out of there? I'm taking range. well, yeah, range. Uh, Seven six two by fifty one and okay. and some five five six and the big gun and the big gun you see a big gun get me one of those you know right. the Nazi killer he called the crazy bitch yeah right <laughs> and uh, are you there where he's getting in the truck yet oh that's where we're coming said. in so then we go outside and like okay here's what we got to do you guys got to go over block this street you guys go over here and block this street there's only two ways he could come through to get to where he's got to go and so Knoxville goes I want to ju- I want to drive old Henrietta here and Arnold goes do you have I stupid names it. for all of your shit yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Only the shit I care about. Yeah. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> And then there's another fun. There's some low key comedy in this there movie. Is, yeah. There's there another really funny is. scene where Arnold's like, "All right, I'll I'll clear out the diner," and he goes in the diner and he's like, "It's oh, not I safe love that here." Scene too. So you all have to go home and get out of here because this is not safe. And I, just, I just started cooking. I do. I, I, I just, ordered, bre- just ordered breakfast. Just ordered breakfast. You know, what I, I just <laughs> ordered a double bacon. <laughs> I'm 72 <laughs> years old with high cholesterol and just ordered a bacon triple egg omelet. Do you think I'm scared of dying? That's, yeah, <laughs> so good. And I loved it because I said. I thought of Ralphie right away yeah. when the when they uh, the bell rings when a flick's tongue is stuck to the pole. He's yeah. like the bell ring. Everybody's in there. I just ordered my omelet. That's right. I just started. I don't cooking. know. The what? bell ring. Like what are we supposed oh, to do? Yeah. I just okay. ordered food. Stay away from the windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we can do that. <laughs> Knoxville then tries to cut down a light pole to block a street. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the cable's attached to the wall. <laughs> Some good physical comedy. Oh, oh my oh god, no. he climbs the thing and he's yeah. just like back and forth on it. <laughs> It breaks. He falls into the back of his truck. <laughs> and I bet that he didn't even use a stun double for that because no, I that's, bet he did. that's Johnny exactly Knoxville. what that's he would have done. Yeah. It's light work for Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, it was the heart of Jackass. Wasn't it? <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, you know, the director was like, oh, well, we got Johnny Knoxville here. We got to have him fall down and l- land on something. Right. But he didn't understand it, right? No, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. It's like, you got to do it. It's just like you got to have Arnold shooting people in the face. You and he did have, it with style. He did it with style. <laughs> it was great. Style. All right, so the FBI, as I said, they get on a jet after seeing the satellite pictures of the bridge. They're on the way. The only reason no, they didn't see the satellite, they saw it on the on the plane. They saw it on the plane. The That's satellite. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, they get on this plane, but regardless of when they saw it, the only reason I'm even including this scene because they don't even show up till it's too late. Oh, right. Yeah. They're done. But yeah. this is where we get the last little bit of backstory about. He goes, "Tell me about the sheriff." Yeah. Forrest Whitaker wants to know more about the sheriff. This is where we find out that he had five bullet holes in him in this big drug bust out in L.A. He yep. worked in narcotics, and he was given the Medal of Valor. And basically, it was one last chance for the movie to tell you before the last fight that he's a major badass. Right. 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 All seven of his team died except for him. And, and Soul Survivor. Point, at we, one point, he basically, basically goes, Danny Glover, I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like all but that. You know, That's right. Like, the guy shows him his uh, printout from his MySpace profile. <laughs> 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 Got what, the bullet holes on it. What song his, was he uh, playing? His top eight friends look pretty good, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. All right, so let's let's just get to it, guys. I've been I've been waiting. We in the yeah, final let's... showdown. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Starting with the twelve bad guys, basically lining up at the end of Main Street. Yep. Yes. Now Ray and Frank and Lewis are not there yet because they went to go get something, which we'll find out what that is in a minute. Yep. Yep. So the only thing blocking the street when the bad guys actually show up. Are it, two cars and Figgy Guzman. hiding behind yeah. with Luis like Guzman. A Chevy Nova or something? It's got like three, four cars. <laughs> Sarah is up on a roof with a with a rifle, sniper rifle, yeah. and it's basically just actual Figgy hunting and, rifle. Or yeah, a hunting Nothing rifle. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. just Figgy and Sarah, right? right. Pretty much. That's it. Yep. And, and then the people that are in the diner. If he would have done the bat wing, it would have worked out great. No, <laughs> you think about waiting? Yes. That would have scared them all away. <laughs> I'll, let you guys, I'll make you guys go watch Waiting to figure out <laughs> that joke. <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> all uh, of our listeners have seen it. I'm hope I'm hope they have. I hope they have. So the 12 bad guys line up on the street. He sends a couple up on the roof. You two go right. You two go left. These dudes, they got their braided goatees ready to go for action. Yeah. Lines okay. in the head. just. And Peter Stromer walks up and he goes... Time for a turkey shoot, right? Oh, he's going to be easy. Because he only right? sees, yeah, all he he sees is Figgy hiding yeah. behind this one car. We got, a couple Paul, of cars and a freaking sheriff's right. deputy here. If you see anything moving, shoot it. If it's not moving, shoot it. Right, but then even, so he calls Ray, he's like, or Sarah calls Ray. He goes, don't engage. Wait until yeah. we get back. And so they're trying not to start this fight. Right. But then Christy walks up. Down the street, Christy she works at the milk. diner. She had to because the farmer the died. Milk. She had to go buy milk. And she does. What's going on? Why are you hiding behind that with a gun? <laughs> Why are these other twelve people have guns? Yeah, she didn't see them. Wow. What's happening, Figgy? What are we doing? And I'm just sitting there going, "Shut up!" Yeah. And of course. Strohmeyer sees he's Christy like, and he's oh, like, I "Oh, I like ass. I could kill for that ass." Was yeah. literally the line. Yeah, and he's gonna shoot her. For no reason. And Figgy had to engage at that point. And at that point, Figgy didn't gotta, have a choice, right? No, no, no Figgy's got to run over and save Christy, and he starts shooting. So the gunfight has started early, and it's Figgy and Sarah versus all of these people. And Christy's taking cover, you know, trying not to get shot either. And eventually, 
He, Figgy puts up a decent fight. They did yeah. a great job here. They did, no, a, no, great no, they job. did a good job. Yeah. But eventually, Stromer goes, get me the big gun again. Get that yeah. big gun. Again, out with this RPG. If you get a two-for-one kill ratio, I mean, that's that's positive, <laughs> that's right? Good. I mean, like, hey, we're, pretty good. we're working in the right direction. And so they, they shoot the RPG into the car that Figgy's hiding behind, and it blows up and flips up over Figgy to the other side in a big giant explosion. Yep. And his hat comes off. And his, his hat, hat comes, off. comes off. And smoke. And Stromer is like, Oof. Mm, well, that's probably yeah, I love it, his right? reaction to it. He's like, hmm, yeah, that was that awesome. Was well, of course that's not it. <laughs> no. Because Figgy marches out of the smoke Picks with a his Tommy hat gun. Up. Yes. Like his awesome. Hat up. A yeah. James Cagney mobster yep. style Tommy gun. Barrel mag, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and just starts just gunning. And he takes out two takes guys. Out two guys. With this Tommy gun before he gets 50 cald in the shoulder by this roof sniper. Yep. And then Sarah takes out the roof sniper from her position across the street. So they've taken out three guys before Ray even gets there. Yeah, They're right. doing pretty They're, good. And that shot right. in the shoulder sets up some hilarity at the end it does, with Johnny. <laughs> it does. I mean, Figgy's a badass, man. I mean, yeah, dude he was. ultimately shakes off a 50 caliber a round. large bore round yeah, anyway. Right, yeah, right. Anyway, about 30 caliber. He's just thing. like, either way. Well, he says at the end that oh, it was 50. Oh, yeah, says it's 50 at the end. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever it is, he might be exaggerating because it's Figgy, right? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not a 50, but no, yeah, no, no. 50 no. would have taken it off. All, all right. right. Yeah. We'll go with it. So the sun, all of a sudden, around the corner, here comes a school bus here tearing comes down the battle yeah. bus. Yes. Frank is is driving the school bus, and he freaking Tokyo drifts this <laughs> yeah. school <Right>. bus. Perfect. <laughs> Perfectly hits right the curb. Right into the curb. Two wheel, <laughs> boom, right back up. Back door opens. Kick here's Arnold door. with the Gatling gun. Yep. And dink him. Running yeah, the yeah, freaking running belt, the dude. Happiness <laughs> is a belt-fed rifle, everybody. <laughs> and and Arnold, expressionless, yeah. right? Which he's, is the best way to do it. He's Just mowing starts mowing, down, mowing dudes down, dudes down, mowing them down. Without a look on his face. And he takes out two more guys. And he goes, welcome to Summerton. But <laughs> did this, you see? Yeah. <laughs> I, I love this guy so much. I can't even... He never it's once just, said he was going to be back, though. <laughs> no, he didn't say he was going to be. But no, like every single time. Did you see like, the joy yes. in Lewis's face? Yeah, yes. that was just that was, was the awesome. joy on my face. <laughs> he's beating the, the vicars and he's just yeah. happy as shit. Knoxville is like, <laughs> like, look at all this wrecked shit. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I'm in my living room going, yeah, <laughs> right. I look I like this oh, twice. Absolutely. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! I just can you. How hard has it got to be to Tokyo drift a bus without tipping the dang thing over? Nah, even though well, it almost oh. started to go over. Right? Cable, he hit, baby. Yeah, like, oh, hit the curb. Yeah, and I came back. <laughs> you remember our bus driver? Yo, the guy that was spinning cocktails while he was uh, driving. Yeah, and he'd uh, he'd park at the Limerick after uh, <laughs> after he dropped us off at the school. What was that and guy's before? name? Was that old guy? Uh, I'd rather not say his name Don't on here. Don't say his name. Just yeah. in, right, just in case fine. he's a, a listener. <laughs> Kurt, do your bus drivers do that when they take you to school? I was too bored to ride the bus. Oh. oh, okay. All right, so then Arnold, because he's not done yet. <laughs> He, they start uh, taking fire oh. from another guy on the roof, and so now they're ducking down inside yeah. the bus. And Sarah, who's their spotter, goes. He's he's across the street on the roof, so he runs. The diner, yeah. He runs out of the back of the Arnold runs out of the back of the yep. bus, crashes through the diner doors. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how you feeling there, Sheriff? Old. Old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, oh my God! You've been shot. No, don't worry. It's just glass. glass. <laughs> Pulls it out. Well, he sells it yeah. so well oh, when he's like yeah. creaking up to his knees, like. Yeah. I like that they didn't try to pretend like he wasn't sixty-six years right, old. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. These movies where they try to like make him look younger or make him act like you know he's playing forty-five. I like lean into the fact he's an old man. I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. I, in the I, last I Terminator. Good. Yeah. yeah with his, uh, silver hair. Yeah. And so he runs up the stairs to get to this guy on the roof, runs up, tackles the dude off the roof yes. in midair. Shoots him and shoots him. <laughs> right. Big red spray oh, of ridiculousness. <laughs> oh my god! Lands like that's so level. unnecessary and wonderful at the same time. <laughs> they crash all the way through the uh, the facade of of uh, Miss Salazar's shop downstairs, yep. Yep. and he is and Arnold's out for like a He's few out minutes, for a little bit, yeah, right. Yeah. Because yeah. a few minutes later they have the scene of him waking up, right? But for a minute he's out. He just dove off, and he's like, and unsung. I'm the, "You think I'm going to wait until we hit the ground to kill you? No, I kill you now no. in the air. <laughs> Boom! Do it now!" 
<laughs> we do it now. <laughs> He didn't want his freaking landing mat to move. You know, right. like, nope, this is your spot. You're, you're my landing mat. Oh, my god! Breaking gosh. my fall. Crash pad. <laughs> but can we all agree that Mrs. Salazar is amazing? She's oh, an she's unsung amazing. hero here. She shows up for the first time and is like, No awesome. trespassing. You're, you're trespassing. Yeah. So there's this, yeah, there, we'll give you some context. In a little bit, there's another mercenary sneaking through her shop, but she's just sitting there in a rocking in chair. In a rocking chair, enjoying just the show. Enjoying the mowing show. MFs down all over the place. And this, like, long-haired mercenary comes through, and she says to him, no trespassing. And he goes, shut up, Grandma. Shut up, Granny. <laughs> Grandma blessed here's, his here's ass. What, <laughs> here's what we learned from this scene. One, be nice to old people. Yeah. <laughs> Two, trespassing is trespassing. Yeah. In Texas, <laughs> you can homestead act in full effect, my friend. And three, Granny Salazar don't mess around. No, oh. she doesn't. She had a freaking Was that a single shotgun. barrel shotgun? Yeah. She it's pulled like, that okay. thing out. Boop. Blows this dude out the window. Through the window. This yeah. is right as Arnold's waking Obliged. up. Obliged. Right? Arnold's like, even Arnold's yeah. like, even like oh. okay. She goes, Put the hurt on him, yeah. Ray. Yeah. Yeah. And even Arnold gives this kind of like, okay. <laughs> right. like he's he a little around and found out. out. Right. That's right. right. Play stupid games. He got faffoed. Meanwhile, another bad guy was heading up the stairs in Sarah's building to try to get to her on the roof, but he ends up pinned between Frank and Sarah, who's upstairs and Frank is downstairs. Now he's on the stairs, stuck between the two of them, taking fire from both ways. Yeah. So he ultimately gets gunned down by Frank, and then they make out yep. right after this that's guy what gets you As you should. As that's you a, should. That's, that's I mean, that's right. Right? That's Saved a, yeah. the life. Ah, there you go. Had one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, uh, <laughs> hold on. I lost my spot because I was looking for that. Uh, burp, 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 burp. Oh, then there's now at this point, there's only two guys left plus Peter Stromer, yeah. the main guy. Yeah. Burrell. And so Lewis blows up one with a flare gun. Let's oh, talk about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shotgun man. <laughs> How does his, that happen? His gun jams, right? The bad uh, guy's The gun bad guy's jammed. marching up to, to kill Lewis. And I love how Lewis is going through cowbell, like whatever. Yeah, he's in his trying box. to get whatever like, oh, he could find. Stupid cowbell. The guy turns to run away when his gun jams and he shoots him in the back, back with, with a flare, flare gun. gun. And it starts to flare and spark. And I'm assuming it's setting off the shotgun shells on his because he had like a bandolier. Yeah. I think it was supposed to be a uh, an aerial flare that Poops. Oh, yeah. is so that it's like what a firework? Happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if it was something to do with the bandolier of shotgun shells he had no, on. Or, I, I agree with you. Were... I thought the same thing. I yeah. thought when it hit his back and it flared it off, it lit all, all the, the shotgun shells. All the shotgun shells, yeah. shells and they all went off. Regardless, he done blowed up real Dude, good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Blue in half. <laughs> and <laughs> arms flying in on Guzman. <laughs> yeah. It's on Figgy. Even Burrell was impressed. Yeah, I was going to say, our bad dude was like, huh? all right, all right. I'm in. Okay, okay. All right, I give me a big gun and a flare That's gun. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And his, <laughs> his pistol was quite impressive as well. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah, got the old like, yeah, cowboy. Yeah, his gun wasn't yeah. bad either. He had the old cowboy gun, yeah. like six shooter. It was, it was cool. It looked like something out of Tombstone or something. It gets down to the point where now it's only Stromer left against Arnold. And so Arnold, he, it starts off with Stromer hiding behind a car. Arnold's marching up T2 style, I'm not even kidding, yeah. with the shotgun doing yep. the pump, 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 boom, boom, boom into the side of the car. But when he gets there, he's, not he's there. disappeared. Yeah. We now see he's somehow made it onto the bus and he's firing at him. Arnold maneuvers his way under the bus. Where Georgina, the big giant gun, yeah. the handgun is there, and he shoots. This is the only part that was a little confusing to me. Peter starts to back up the bus. I'm assuming trying to run over Arnold, and Arnold just, shoots. He's trying, to move, he's it, trying yeah. to move it out of the way so that the Corvette can come. Oh, through, or that know. too. And Arnold shoots through the floor and shoots the guy's ear off. Yeah, right. Yes. He yes. misses him first altogether. Yeah, right. And then he shoots right through his friggin' ear. <laughs> this is good stuff. This is great. Time. He's lost his ear in a movie, in a gunfight, because they got his ear shot off in Big Lebowski, too, oh. Peter Stromer. Well, and they do that, yeah. like, yeah. high-pitched, like, ringing sound. <laughs> yeah. To, yeah. like, yeah. make it like his... He's shell-shocked. His hearing, yeah. yeah, his right. hearing is completely gone. Yes. And he starts kind of like, yeah, he was a, going he was down. Woozy. Yeah, yeah, he was woozy. And so by the time he stands up and turns around, Arnold is now On in, and drawn. The, in the bus, yes. halfway down the aisle of where, like, the kids would sit, with the big gun pointed straight. And it's just a great... Shot like you could take a snapshot of that, yeah. and it's fantastic, right? right. And he goes, Drop it. And Peter Stromer drops his one gun and says, Who in the hell are you? 
and then tries to pull another, another gun, one. gets himself shot in the face Boom. for his trouble. Yep. Brains all over the top of the bus. I'm the sheriff. Yes. <laughs> You know, I feel bad for the bus driver because they had to take that little that little packet of like the soft sawdust, yeah, the, the, had, the mint flavored sawdust, and clean that up. I wish there'd just been a bus driver coming to my. Oh, damn it! No, He's no, got no, his no, hand no, bruised with a little brush broom, yeah, just coming out of the aisle. Think kids throwing up on the bus. It's MFs getting their brains blown out on Dude, it. Dude, I, I had know. a I have a traumatic memory of that. I puked on the going to St. Peter's before I was going to public school with you guys. I went to St. Peter's and. I vomed on the bus, yeah. and I remember vividly the pissed off bus driver walking back with the bag of the sawdust oh, or whatever yeah. and pouring it on. And I felt of holy terrible. Water. <laughs> and they all were like so mean to the me power about of it. Christ compelled. Oh, why oh. do you have eggs? <laughs> right. So at this point, everybody is dead that came to assault the town outside of obviously Cortez is still coming in his Corvette, Corvette. towards yeah. the town, yeah. right? But it's otherwise done. Now, Cortez tries to call Peter Stromer on the radio and says, are you ready for me? And he gets Arnold going, oh, yeah, we're ready. Come here and I'll kill you. Yeah. Or whatever he says. Yeah. I don't remember whatever exactly. Oh, we're ready for you. It was about yeah, that. Yeah, so we're ready. It's time for me to beat you because it's the end of the movie. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, basically. Um, basically, Cortez is able to maneuver through and blow through town in his Corvette. Arnold's like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? He remembers he's got the keys from the mayor who yeah. was like, move it if you need to move it. And the only chases. section of the street need that's not it. exploded is the fire lane in this freaking <laughs> Camaro. <laughs> you know, like, everything else is just torch. Like, the guy's know, Camaro is. That's why it's the fire lane. <laughs> that's right. It's safe there. <laughs> and so he, before he knows Arnold is chasing him, though, he throws the agent who was the fake hostage out. He said, yeah. you're out supposed car, to look yeah. like you're an escaped hostage. Kisses her and at high speed. I thought she was dead. I thought she was dead. Dead. Just, just straight up, right yeah. off, barely onto, like, they just got off the highway and just yeah. onto dirt grass, shoulder. dirt yeah. shoulder, yeah, right dirt road, the whatever. Field, yeah. yeah. And they weren't the going field. slow. Yeah. No. And she eats it, just shoved right out the door. And then Arnold shows up in the Camaro, and they have this, let's just talk about this cornfield car chase. They just yes. chase each other through the cornfield. How are you going to find? All right. <laughs> I was going to. You are in a cornfield. In the desert. Driving through the corn. Oh, there's right? that too, yeah. You can't yeah. see where this other car is because there's corn everywhere. Perfect, <laughs> perfect merge. Yeah. Now, A, he had a hell of a head start because Arnold is on foot yeah. 300 yeah. feet away from right. a car. Yeah. Right. And I assume he's going to have to adjust the seat at I mean, least yeah. to at get least. in it. I don't know. Well, that mayor was a big dude. Yeah, yeah the mayor was maybe. a big dude. Yeah. But regardless, he's got to get in this thing and then go catch him back up. Yeah. It's like, how how did he end up going through the cornfield from the edge to come Because he, it's and, his town. He knows a shortcut he knew the to shortcut. get there. He knew the shortcut. Right? He turned left at Albuquerque. I don't know. And I so, thought it was corny at best. Yeah. Don't ha. you dare. What? No. Not while you're at the kids' table. I, I can't? I, no. <laughs> Come on. So, <laughs> kill the mic. So he was stalking him. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. <laughs> Next one gets a flip-flop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we almost made it through the entire dang movie. <laughs> the guy's driving through the corn, and Arnold comes out and kind of T-bones him yeah, a little almost, bit yeah. with the Camaro. And then they're going back and forth, pushing each other through. But the the Corvette, they, he does uh, Cortez does like a pit maneuver yeah. Yeah. to the Camaro and gets up underneath him. And now the Camaro is riding on the hood. Yeah, up sideways. sideways. Uh, that was pretty crazy. I'd have popped a couple rounds through the driver's door right there. Yeah, but Arnold's the one that reached out and shot down right. at the Corvette, yep. which is ultimately why he stopped, dumped him but off. I don't think mm -hmm. Cortez had a gun either, though. Maybe not. Well, perhaps. Quartet, you're right. He never has a gun. I don't gun. think he ever has a gun. That's really shitty planning. So. It is. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're going to escape. No guns. And he doesn't take a gun. Yeah. Quartet. Yeah, sweet knife, though. <laughs> they did have sweet knife. It gets to the point where they've separated in the corn, and they are now sitting in their cars at a standstill trying to figure out. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? And it cuts to this wide overhead shot where you see they're not that far from each other. There's a all. Nebraskan right. you know. standoff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If they would have used their ears, they would have hurt each other. Well, um, this is the big gripe of it. Their is, ears. 
There's two big V8s. Oh. Okay, two big V8s, and there's no <laughs> idle noise. No idle noise none. whatsoever. I was going to say, I was like, literally, you guys are less than two parking spaces <laughs> away, and one gonna, staggered back. Right, there's yeah. no way you're not hearing not either of these cars. No. Up Corvette. I was no, also going to ask, because I know you're a car guy, Clint. Are Camaros and Corvettes four-wheel drive? Absolutely, when they need to be okay. in a movie. <laughs> That's what I thought. All right. Do they have that uh, uh, shut off ignition idle? <laughs> there's that, that's, why, that's, why, that's why you didn't hear them. Yeah. Here's the, there's this one. The biggest the biggest offender is is that one shot where the Camaro where starts Arnold starts creeping. to creep forward and it's and silent. It's silent. All yeah. you hear is the cracking corn. of the corn. Yeah. And it's like oh, watch well, as the gazelle creeps up on its <laughs> right. The majestic well, Camaro is hunting for the Corvette <laughs> here in the cornfield. Like that's kind of what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah. Arnold cracked corn and I don't care. <laughs> But they absolutely would have heard these well, giant yeah, supercars. Yeah. yeah. Cause that Camaro was like a uh SS or yeah, above whatever. version two souped up. Yeah, well I heard it was an what RT was it one. Art yeah, R- 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 one it had the badge yeah, on it. I don't know. I, yeah. Had the badge Regardless, on. I don't think I don't think the Z R one is keeping up with or I think the cor- in, the cor- the Camaro is not keeping up with the Corvette. No. Honestly, in the dirt, I think they're both exactly the same. <laughs> well, even the, even with the one that's all I, souped up, I think yeah, in the dirt horsepower means jack shit. Yeah, because so maybe that's one of them got any traction cars, right there. And maybe that's why they had them have this chase through the cornfield to even the playing field. Yeah, maybe. I mean, just to take that out of just it. To take yeah. that out of it. Yeah. This is the dirt farmer here. It is. That's true. That's why I'm asking it. Ah, crap. Now, I, here's, what I'll t- here's what I'll tell you is that Dana was watching this with me, and she's the one that called this out. They're flooring it through this cornfield, and she's like, I'd be more afraid that we're going to run into some piece of farm equipment out here. And, and sure enough, sure enough. They, come, they clear this corn, and there's a combine yeah. right. sitting right there. All right. right in the middle. That farmer wouldn't have left his damn combine. <laughs> In the middle of the, f- I mean, now if they're harvesting no, and the stuff, and he's guys running one of the trucks back and the, forth yeah. and stuff like. But it was like a perfect circle section. Like he's like, ah, oh, this is a good place to park, and ran a circle <laughs> and then stopped like a dog <laughs> sniffing his bed a couple of times. You know what I mean? Before he lays yes. down. Yes. Here's a question I have though. Yeah. And I'm not a, a farmer in New Mexico, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> what is their corn season? I, I don't know. Because that corn was all like six, seven feet high, well, and you yeah. got to assume this football. is the fall. It's football, right? Yeah, I don't know. They had to be like football champion would be like November. What yeah. we got to do? We got to get a f- New Mexico farmer on the horn here right now. Somebody write the show. Say, hey, I grow corn in New Mexico, <laughs> and this is why this movie is bull crap. Okay, I want to hear from you guys. Yeah, All a, real, those... a real husky guy. Uh, uh, flop, flip flop time. All right, his mic's turned off All right. now. All right. Okay, so here, <laughs> here you have a one minute timeout. Then I'll turn it back on. Okay. All right. Yeah. So so they blow through and here they come through the corn and here's this combine. The Corvette kind of fishtails and gets nailed on the smacks back the end of it. Smacks the back of it. Disables the, the, yeah. the car. The Camaro comes through and has the entire top of the car yep. shaved Got off. A convertible now. Just like Smokey and the Bandit. That's right. The whole thing is just ripped off. Like, I hope he ducked. <laughs> Turns out he did. But the Camaro kind of disappears because Cortez crawls up out of the Corvette and he's looking around. He's there's dazed. no there's he's no like, Arnold. Uh, right. Right. And my wife goes, nope, now he's got to make a run for the border. Yep. <laughs> Taco Bell. Sponsored by Taco Bell. And that's he's now he's on foot, and so he literally is running to this bridge. He's not seen Arnold yet. He clears through the corn. Here's this bridge. It's kind of this tall, I don't know how assault bridges work, but it's this tall metal bridge yeah. that goes across this canyon into Mexico. Seems like you have something you want to say. From the shot, <laughs> we can see across the bridge. Nobody's on Nobody's it. on yeah, the bridge. Nobody's right. between him and the bridge. No, because he's lying down waiting so the cameraman doesn't see him. He's hanging off the side him. of the bridge. He doesn't even want the cameraman to see him. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> Don't you dare. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Does it's not good. matter. He gets to the bridge. As he clears, his eyesight clears the ramp up. There, it's revealed. Arnold freaking Schwarzenegger. Arnold. It stands between you and getting to freedom. You're hosed, my guy. I bet he I is it. Border Patrol. <laughs> That's right. I bet I make it. You Because be- <laughs> I have a U.S. passport. You would not stop me. <laughs> Dude, at this point, there's some great dialogue exchanged. So Cortez goes, you're, you're out of your timeout, by the way. <laughs> now no shut problem. up. <laughs> Cortez goes, you effed up my car. He's like, you effed, you effed up, up my day, day off. 
right. 12,000 Mexicans come in every day. You shouldn't care if one goes back. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Right. And then Arnold's like, you make us immigrants look bad. Yeah. And finally, his last ditch, he goes, here's my banker. He literally pulls out his cell phone. He's got a, no gun, Almost but he's got a cell million. phone. Right? $5 million. Dollars. We'll part his friends. Tell him where to deposit the money. And Arnold just pulls out handcuffs. And he goes, all right, fine, $10 million. <laughs> he the handcuffs at him. Yeah. The guy's a horrible negotiator goes, for being this big <laughs> drug boss. Right. <laughs> he goes, you put these on or I will, and throws them down at his feet. And now this guy's got a decision to make. Am I going to bank my freedom on winning a fist fight with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Or am I going to, you know, run back the other direction and try again another day? Right. He made the wrong decision. He made the wrong decision, well. my friend. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? I don't care how good of a fighter you are. If the big guy gets his hands on you, it's over. It's over. I mean, he was kind Maybe. of judging his Metamucil intake for the yeah. day, whether or not he'd be, you know. <laughs> Doesn't he call him Ab Abuela or Abuela? Abuelito. 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 Yeah. Little grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, that was the end. That was He just ended his own life right uh, there. Pretty much. Don't you don't yep. be calling him grandpa. Because grandpa was, had a little something for him. Yeah, he did. <laughs> just like grandma did in town for okay. you. <laughs> Seriously. That's what's going to happen. He comes over here. And this thing, so he runs right at him, and it just immediately spear tackles. Arnold spear tackles Cortez to the ground. He's yep. at game on. They have this, what I can only describe as a WWE wrestling That's match. That's exactly what it was. On this yes. ramp. Definitely when, a smackdown. Arnold picks him up, German suplexes him up behind his back. And I'm like, all right, yeah, here we're, we it's go. on. And then Cortez gets him like in an arm bar and starts to like try to choke him out with his feet or whatever. Right. And Arnold just grabs deadlifts his shirt, him, grabs That's his what shirt, I'm saying. like deadlifts him up and power bombs him onto the on corner the, on the side of the bridge, which you would have thought it broke his back at that. It point. should at least hurt. It looked like it right. broke his spine. No, well, the blow glanced off because of his wet back. So, oh, what, man. <laughs> wow, here's some, here's something that's not going wow. in. All right, <laughs> I I wrote this on here and I go will not include, but had to say because I wanted to see what your guys' reaction would be. Uh, <laughs> As the quarter honorary Mexican, I'll allow it. <laughs> As the guy who speaks Spanish, I will not allow it. <laughs> All right. So you think his spine is broken at this point. I mean, it looked like, and even, even my wife's like, oh, he killed him. Now right. he can't go to That's jail, right? right? And, yeah. But then he starts to drag Drags him. him by his foot. That was <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that was just good. dragging him. Cortez pulls out a hidden blade, starts to slice him up, and sticks it in Arnold's leg. Now, what do you think happens when you stick a knife in Arnold's leg. Right in his glass. Wound. Eye for an eye. Leg for a leg. That's right. Arnold's you, going to be pissed. You know what's going to happen. He's going to take it out of his leg, and then you're going to have you? it in yeah. his Right. <laughs> you just gave him a knife. Right. <laughs> That's guess all what, you did. Guess what's going to happen to the knife? <laughs> you're going to eat it. That's <laughs> what's going to happen. Come on, guys. Like, you almost expect Arnold to absorb the knife and spit it back out at him. You know what I mean? It's like, right. He doesn't right. even limp when he walks back over no. to him. And finally, and this is the funniest part of the whole movie. After all that, he's sitting there. The Cortez got the knife in him. Arnold starts walking to him and goes, okay, fine. 20 million. Yeah. <laughs> he just keeps negotiating with himself. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is so great. I got to give it up for him. For Ar Dude, for old man Arnold, this was a this was, was a good a good, good fight. Yeah, he said my a good fight. My honor is not for sale. That's right, my honor is not for sale. And he goes, "F your honor." And then he actually was. I thought this really cool scene. Like he turns around, he's on the ground, and he can see Mexico. Right. Yeah. Like they show this from Cortez's point of view, yeah. where he's looking when back he across up, the bridge. He can see it. It's right there. He's that close to getting away, but you didn't count on. Yeah. Ray Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's right, man. They, that was a hell of a plan, though. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. he about, almost did it. He almost think did about it. they don't kill the farmer. You know, farms are big in places yeah. like this. Yep. Um, he was a milk farmer, dairy farmer. He delivered the friggin' milk. Right. I didn't see on his farm where he was planting corn when they drove all the way out there and the work lights were going. There was no corn where they were putting this bridge. Yeah. Um, at that point, anyway. Right. So it's like. Why don't you just go over there all quiet like and shit like that and don't wake up the farmer for a day or two and yeah. just get it done? You don't kill the farmer, you don't involve Arnold. No, right? that's true. Right. They they it was a great it was a it great was a plan. Fantastically and they almost did complicated it. plan. Yeah. They almost made it. 
So yep. kudos to them. But that's it. So they're back in town. Figgy shook shook Figgy shook off a fifty cal bullet and walked it off. <laughs> Johnny Knoxville got <laughs> shot, winked yeah. in the arm too. It was like, oh, like a BB. Like I got Barry. shot in a shirt. Oh, that's that's tiny. That's, that's a, BB. a BB. That's, that's a right. BB. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest Whitaker rolls into town. Finally. Ray's not there. He's like, what's going on? Where's Ray? I don't know where Ray is. Do you know where he is? Like, turns around. There he is driving the Camaro. Yeah. Up main the company. roof off the of convertible it. convertible Bumper Camaro. hanging down. <laughs> Cortez towing. is tied to the end of it. And he's yeah. hopping on one leg. On his, on his leg that doesn't have the knife in it. <laughs> good stuff. It's good stuff. And, and to his credit, Forrest Whitaker did say, I underestimated you to Arnold. Arnold's just kind of like... You know, he's nobody messes with my town. And then all, all, all Whitaker says is impressive. impressive. And then he walks away. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> the only line he didn't say angrily the whole <laughs> really into movie. A phone. Seriously. He winks at Arnold and walks away. That's right. Yep. How do you know he winked? The one I. Well, that's a little just bit blinking. More than normal. Then the, the last little, the little cherry on top. The mayor shows back yes. up again. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> and says, What happened per- to my car? Perfect ending. Is don't park in the fire. Wait, <laughs> don't park in the fire lane. And he throws the keys. Back. He's at him. Schmuck. Schmuck. <laughs> Book ended that one nicely. Perfect ending. <laughs> the end of the movie. Oh my gosh. Let's go watch it again. <laughs> I've watched it twice already. How I did too. Yeah. On Earth, I rented it and then bought it. I bought it right away. I'm I like, rented like it because, like James I'm said, because I remember we, we were talking about this briefly or something like yeah. that, and James was like, "Oh man, this is the most ridiculous thing." Blah blah blah, and it was about the helicopter at that yes. point, but I didn't remember exactly what it was. I was like, "All right, I'll just rent it in case it really is trash." Right. And I watched it the first time, and I didn't even use my second day to watch it again you while renting it. it. I bought it. I bought it. I was like, "Oh, ten bucks? Hell yeah, I'm gonna buy this." That's awesome, guys. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a clue how on earth. This is a 53% rotten it's audience not. score. It's about you've, to go up. You've like, got legitimately we have percent enough of people, the people out there yeah. not using their brain. We've got enough people right now who are listening to us that we should be able to sway yes. that into shouldn't be on our go show. throw right? an audience score up on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's, please, let's do it. Please do. do it. You guys want to give some awards to this movie? Yes. yes. All of them. Let's do it. We're going to start, as we always do, with our Will Patton Award for Intensity. You want a war? I'll give you a war! Oh, Gloss, I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night! And if they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm gonna take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember forever the night they played the Titans. What? The Will Patton Award for Intensity, named after... This man right here, Will Patton, as you just heard. He's got a man. huge head. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most intense actors out there, man. That dude, that was him if in Postman and in Remember the Titans. And I've got more. I'm going to change it up once in a while. Every i got like 19 different clips of him being intense as hell. This is the guy. So who was that actor in The Last Stand who showed up like Will Patton shows up, regardless of the movie, to say, I am giving this 110%. I'm going to be dialed in like crazy. Who was your nomination for the, we'll start with Mel on that end for the Will Patton Award for Intensity. Sometimes what's not said mm. is just as intense as what's said. Mrs. Salazar. <laughs> Mrs. Salazar was the most intense and she sent it full no send. Trespassing. Okay, Mrs. Salazar with the first vote. Uh, Clint, where are you at on this? Man, this one's hard. I mean, intense. Arnold wasn't intense the whole time, but when he wasn't, he was Arnold the whole mm-hmm. damn time. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going. I'm doing it. For, he's, going Arnold? he's clean sweeping this thing. All right. Every one of my votes. Arnold. Except for trash cans. I actually went with, I think Arnold was Arnold. Yeah, he was absolutely 100% played Arnold. So, please. I'm, I, I love it. I'm not By not giving him this nomination, it doesn't mean I didn't love it. I'm actually with Eduardo Noriega, the guy that played Cortez. I yeah. thought did a really bang up job. Yeah, yeah, and good bad guy was super. I mean, yeah. even the exchanges he had uh, with Arnold, I thought it was just really, really well done. So I went with him. So so far we've got three singular vote getters. Who you got? Ryan? Yeah, I mean, I was between like three. I was between Stromer. Ooh, he was good too. Um, 
Cortez and Arnold, but ultimately I'm like, I'm going with Arnold on this one. All right, that's two for Arnold. Arnold. We've got, luckily, a couple people playing from our Patreon. Now, ultimately, if we need a tiebreaker, Kurt over at the kids' table will be the one to break that tie. Wake up, Kurt. And oh, sorry. Uh, I'm playing those Ruby, 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 Ruby Cubes? Ruby, what sure. Rubik's. Rubik's yeah, Cube. One of those. Who is that? We had two people playing from the Patreon. The first is Mr. Aaron Nowak. And so Mr. Nowak actually went with Lois Geary as Mrs. Salazar. Okay. Oh, his we got tie games. We got two, now. two and two. Tie game. He said, laugh my Salazar. ass off when she nice. shot the dude in the back. <laughs> and, uh, gave it her all when she said, put the hurt on him, Ray. <laughs> and at the end, when she just didn't want to get in trouble for killing the guy, she was great. Yeah. So that's two for 2v2 two two now. Because James Pulley, our other person from Patreon said Forrest Whitaker got his one. Ooh. So it was literally I mean, well he's not wrong. Nobody's time, perfect. Yeah. He's not wrong in the way he described it. He said he was literally angry for ninety nine percent of the movie. Yeah. The one percent he wasn't was when he said impressive to Schwarzenegger. Right. Yeah. And that was it. And he was amazing. So that's a, a vote for Forrest Whitaker. But it comes down to you, Kurt, because we've got to break the tie between Mrs. Salazar and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, is it the is it going to be the old lady that shot the dude in the store, awesome. or Arnold? He was the sheriff in this one. Yeah, if you didn't oh, know who that was. Oh, right. Thanks. Uh, I'm going with Arnold. All right. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger the kid with the right vote. Wow, win. impressive, impressive. Yeah. impressive. Yeah. Let's Forrest Whitaker, impressive. <laughs> Let's hope Miss Salazar is not in the uh, parking lot. <laughs> 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 Honorable mention you, to but... Lois Gary for uh, playing Miss no, Salazar. So she, she did a great job. Yeah, Arnold's going to take too. home the award. Nice job. The next award is one you're not going to want to win, but we give it out every week anyway. The Michael Dudikoff Trash Can Full of Dirt Award, which is the award we give out to the person that had the worst acting performance, the person who had an acting range of a trash can full of dirt. So, Mel, who was your nomination for the trash can? Tom Arnold. <laughs> you can't <nominate> Tom. <laughs> he wasn't I mean, even in the you movie. You mean to name the trash can yeah. after? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I keep saying Tom Arnold, maybe we can let up on Mr. Dudikoff. <laughs> Someday. Someday. Someday soon. So this is going to be a hot take here. Mm. I went Gabriel Cortez. Oh, you did. As a trash and can full of dirt. Okay, so that's fine. Well, what is it but, you didn't like about him? Uh, as, I'm, as I'm thinking about this, he was the stereotypical... I'm a drug lord guy. There was yeah. no like real the, the backstory that he's a race car driver. But then I thought, as this went on, the FBI agent that rode along with him, mm -hmm. she was pointless. Yeah, so, to yeah. the point yeah. where I didn't even yeah. look up what her name was. I didn't care. Agent so I'm Richards. Have to, okay, yeah, yeah, whatever. So I'll, I'll have to give it to her. <laughs> okay, uh, All right. just just based on the fact that she was pointless. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's fine. Agent Richards, I think, was her last. Was yeah, her that's character what her name? character name is. All right, who you got, Clint? That's what I was going to go with. Our escaped, escaped uh, hostage, really hostage, Richards. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, I went with Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> All right. I I did. <laughs> Why do you hate Forrest Whitaker? I I just. It's not a, a knock on Forrest Whitaker. I love him in a lot. Of, I love him in Rogue One. Okay, fair uh, enough. You know, he basically was playing the same character he played in Taken Three in this movie. I just, I hated. I think this has more to do with me hating his character so the much. Character, yeah. Than yeah. But thinking necessarily he was bad. Again, I think we're supposed to. And in a movie where there wasn't a lot of bad acting performances, I just went with the character I hated the most. Yeah. All right. So, fair enough. Forrest, Forrest Whitaker. And who do you have? I also went with Forrest Whitaker. I oh, absolutely time. Oh, no. hated his character, and that's it. it this, there wasn't an obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Oh, they were just absolutely horrible, right? right. And it's like his character just but was somebody, there. I mean, my, didn't have depth. It was. I would rather had Phil be the head guy, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but my difference here is that somebody had to be that guy. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody could have been right you. along. I got you. No, sure. All right. Yeah. Well, let's go to the Patreon. So we've got Mr. James Pulley. He actually came with Jamie Alexander as his trash can full of dirt. The girl played Sarah, the other cop. So I'm sorry. Yeah. She's just yeah. always the weak point of any film she's in. Whoa, 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 buddy. James, hot take there on Jamie Alexander. And every movie she's in? I don't know if I can agree with that. I you know can't. What? I'm, I don't have enough information. Maybe she, I'll, I'll text her and see what she says. Yeah, see what Jamie thinks. Uh, I respect your opinion, but I've liked her in a lot of the stuff that she's been in. But... Hey, hey, didn't do it for James Pulley in this one. That's That'll happen. Was this happens. her best performance? No, but was she horrible? No. No. 
All right, so it's James Pulley that didn't like her? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, tell her. Uh, the last vote here comes from Aaron Nowak, and he does vote for Forrest Whitaker. Right, so Forrest Whitaker is going to win the Trash Can Full of Dirt Award. Okay. Mm. All right. Well. He says he went too far over the top. It was like if Caillou grew up <laughs> <laughs> and became an FBI agent. He was whiny and loud in the role. It didn't need to be that nuts with a Z. Yeah. Even nuts. Oh, nuts with a Z. Now he's. We know he's serious. So yeah, even though we already Z. even though we already have a winner, Kurt, I'm curious as to who you would have picked. Uh, Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. Oh, there you go. Would have been a landslide then. Semi-unanimous. It, Semi-unanimous. The kids table getting the right <laughs> answers today. Yeah. I, I, that's I how did, unanim- did my unanimity works. Good. good. All right. Dog didn't need it, right? No, no. Good. All right, good. Now we share our personal opinions about who is the best in the movie. We give our, our top three performers. This has everything to do with quality. You can like somebody because they're terrible, but who are the three performances that you enjoyed the most in this film? Mel, who you got? Luis Guzman for yeah. Figueroa, number yeah. three. Sure. Arnold for number two. Okay. Uh, and I went with Johnny Knoxville. Knoxville no. was number your favorite. One, Louis Dinkum. That's oh, he was that great. Was a great character. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious yeah. why you thought he was your favorite. Was just because you were just a big Knoxville fan? I, I, re- I relate to him. him. Yeah, no, I know you love. <laughs> yeah, they're the same person. <laughs> <laughs> they are literally the same guy. <laughs> I, I well, feel an attachment funny. to him. No, I know. <laughs> I, that's he was great. He was great. That and I used to get called the jackass a lot when I was a kid. There so. you go. That's true. Uh, I'm gonna come with that Vickers later, Mel. Time for the Dirt Farmer. Who are, who is your top three performances? Man, we're gonna go with Cortez. I I mean, okay. as a villain, uh, he was the villain. I like to I like to root for the villains. I, obviously, we weren't rooting for him, yeah, but you like right. to see some action. Yep. Uh, great stuff along the way. I love the car he was driving. I give him a little bit of extra points there. They, they, if you're gonna yeah. steal a car to escape, you know, he picked steal a, good a goddamn one. car. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, then we're going to have Johnny Knoxville and Arnold. All right. Number one. Number it's one. It's got to be. Johnny Knoxville was a awesome. You're not yes. wrong, though. Yes. You're not wrong. Yeah, so I had Jamie Alexander at number three. I, I'm, But I'm kind of like with you picking Knoxville. I'm just a fan of hers, so that's why I had her in my top three. Mm-hmm. I thought she was really good. I had Luis Guzman at number two, and then, of course, Arnold is number one. Number Luis. one. This guy was just telling me about how much he hates Guzman. Yeah, well, you know what? I, that was before I watched the movie that right. I told you about that. Because I'm generally not a fan of his. Right, because right. we were talking about this like seriously. Yeah. Because in waiting, he was hilarious. See, I didn't like him in waiting. I didn't like him well, in that's Count of Monte like Cristo. The Batwing? That's because you worked with him at the time. <laughs> the goat. <laughs> Count of Monte Cristo. I didn't like him in that movie. I you know I, I'm just not a huge fan of his, but he actually but, was really good in this. But like I said, I, I enjoy a person who can say, I don't generally like this guy. And hey, this guy had one yeah. of the best performances I've seen in this movie. Yeah, That's right. what happened to me. I like so it. I like it. Who are your top three? I mean, I've I've got honorable mentions. Like Guzman gets an honorable mention. Cortez. Yeah. I My top three, I have uh, Peter Stormare at three. Okay. I've got Johnny Knoxville at two. And okay. of course, Arnold's one. There you go. Knoxville getting a lot of love on this top three. I, he, a, he had a I, dude. He was fantastic. He, yeah, he stole his moments. No, it was yeah. great. Yeah, he, he made great. you just giggle. Yeah, I mean the first time you see screen. him, he's in right. combat boots, a bathrobe, and a and a hat <laughs> with like a, a plastic freaking deputy in the middle of a hot ass desert and a white like beater. The, right. It's called Mel's Monday Morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's All right, well, let's go to the Patreon. We got James Pulley coming in with number three, Forrest Whitaker. He was so mad all the time. He loved that. Well, he nominated him for his uh, for well, his uh, Will Patton Award. So he really got to go with nights and weekends. That's right. What do you mean he's gone? Find him. <laughs> Where's uh, the bridge? Number two, he gave to Knoxville. He said he yeah. made me laugh in almost every scene he was in. And the number one, Arnold. Of and it course. says, of course, next to it. <laughs> So uh, we also got Mr. Aaron Nowak writing in with his top three. And number three, put Luis Guzman. He said, look, he took a 50 cal to the shoulder after being blown up. <laughs> I swear his scene influenced parts of GTA 5, which came out eight months after this. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Maybe. It's not like it takes time to write it. No. You remember <laughs> Balls of Fury? <laughs> This man is amazing and love that he can make a movie better by being in it, just like Raul Julia. So props he gave. Lots of props to Luis Guzman. Number two, he went with Daniel Henney, who played Phil, Agent Phil Hayes, right. the okay. second in command to uh, Forrest Whitaker. Because he actually came off like I would expect an FBI agent to be. He was like the Batman, quiet, reserved, ready yep. to kick ass. Yep. When Forrest Whitaker was complaining and screeching like a bald-headed Canadian preschooler. <laughs> <laughs> Take it they've never been to Canada. No. He said, Henny made Whitaker's scene somewhat watchable, so for that, I present him with my second spot. And number one, 
Ji Yong Kim, oh, the director of the photography, director. Hmm. said, I love the visuals throughout this movie, especially during the zip line sequence and the deaths during the standoff. Seriously gorgeous looking movie and really helped me cement my opinion of my rating for this film. But hold on just one damn second here. A Aaron, there's something there, missing yeah, from your I was top just three. Say, there seems to be something missing. I don't know what the hell's going no, on here? No what the models. hell you thought you were watching? One of these things are not like the other. One's not an actor. <laughs> That's a really shitty acting well, performance. Listen, the guy wasn't even in there. I respect your props that you gave to the director of photography. But, but you're wrong. How dare you not put an Arnold Schwarzenegger spot in your in top his three comeback movie and his comeback movie. You're slipping, Aaron. Okay, you're slipping. And you're I'm slipping the down stadium. the list. Okay, Aaron should. Be I'm so dis. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. That's what I'll say. Okay. All right. So here's the question. Yeah. <laughs> because Arnold, normally we we would ask. Would Arnold make this better? What's well, hold on. We, I want to get we, Kurt's, and then you can ask oh, that question. Yeah. yeah. So, Kurt, who were your top three? Uh, I went with three Guzman. Okay. Uh, two Johnny Knoxville. Nice. And I went with number one uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. That's because that's the right answer. Yeah. Kids, I did my, the right I did my homework. Question. Kids table with all the right okay. answers today. Spell who's it test, out. Whose test are you copying off that's of right. over there? I got two books here, okay. and Spell I'm not telling out. you. A R N O L D. Arnold. Right? Yes, Arnold. Arnold. Yes, that's oh. Arnold. <laughs> All right, sorry. It's got a couple A's in there. <laughs> All right, so Arnold. I was going to skip right over this section since Arnold's already in the movie, right. but go ahead. What well, were you going to so say? So we normally ask, would Arnold make this film better? And yeah. obviously he did. Yes. But yes. the question comes up, would Hulk Hogan make this film better? <laughs> You're as not getting Jerry, to Mexico, brother. As, as Jerry. <laughs> hey, I'm a, there's not enough action out here. That's I need right. some more action. Hey, brother, I'm the sheriff. <laughs> Arnold, Arnold, leg drop off the bridge. <laughs> leg drop, brother. They already had the wrestling fight. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they did. Because I'm going to ask you one question, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do, Cortez, when the 24 inch pythons <laughs> run wild on you? Macho Man pops up on the <laughs> canyon. <laughs> Oh yeah. oh yeah! What do you what do you have like Sheriff Zubas? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, we got to ultimately land oh. somewhere on this movie. Is it a good movie? Full stop. No qualifiers. Is it a bad movie that should not have been rated highly at all? Or is it a bad movie that rules? Where do you guys land on this movie? Mel? Good movie. Full stop. Good full movie. Stop. Good movie. You too, Clint? Keep going. Good movie. <laughs> Look, this is a good movie. I'm giving it the full-on good movie full stop treatment. There's Somebody's no reason. screwed up here. <laughs> and I thank you. That's right. Every two years, we got to get one. That's right. <laughs> all right. Who you got, Ryan? Man, this is... So this is... You got your puppy. Uh, oh, <laughs> the no. the carpet train. scale. Give me the carpet scale, yeah. Yeah, for Dave, not Paul Parkinson. That's right. Potty train lets you know I got to go shit, go shits in the yard right where you trained it to. It's a good movie. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what's up. <laughs> Kurt. Yes, sir. What do you think? Uh, this this movie sucked. No, I'm just kidding. It's a f***ing good movie. <laughs> yeah, this is a good movie. My only knock on this whole movie, and I've complained about it before, is whoever sound balanced this thing sucks. Yes, dude. He's just such an old man, dude. He's always like, I can't hear what they're saying. I can't hear what they're saying. <laughs> All right, let's go to the Patreon. So uh, James didn't submit a what he a final rating, but based on what he was saying, I'm going to assume he, he said a good, good movie. movie. Yep. We'll say that yeah. James Pulley said that. Mr. Aaron Nowak, who I almost don't even want to read this decision uh, anymore after not putting Arnold in his uh, top three. He didn't put his Arnold in his top three. Here we go. Unbelievable. I never thought I would spend money to watch this movie, yet I'm mad that I rented it and didn't buy yes. the digital ah. version. Kind of like redoomed, redoomed I himself. said, it's a gorgeous movie to look at. The acting may not be the best all the way around. Arnold's a little stiff with his dialogue. Shut the, your damn face. At the beginning. <laughs> But his one-liners were on point. You're getting better, Aaron. They okay. also needed to stay away from the PBS kids show characters. Is what I you. <laughs> <laughs> but this movie, I feel, is full stop a good movie. Yes, yes. 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 Aaron is back, is. baby. <laughs> yes, Aaron is it back. is. He may have a black eye, but he's back. Aaron is he's back. Da 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 is this the first all-around good movie? It has to be. It has to be. 
He says, well, I Batman. really liked it and kind of wish I would have watched it with my and brothers. Then, All of Arnold's headshots he World. has are freaking amazing. Good movie. I yes. don't think Waterworld got it, it all the way across good movie. I think a bunch of us did, but I think Oof. somebody had a... One. It might have been movie rules. Yeah. This board. was straight around. This was though. straight around. Yeah. This movie was just fun. Yeah. It was yeah. good fun. It's great. It, the the action was over the top, and it wasn't even some of these movies. Ah, oh, fun to watch with people. No, this no, movie was no it was fun. just fun. Yeah. The comedic is good in there. Good timing. The com- yeah. If I, 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 I would take a bath in the, this movie if I could, if that was possible. I'd fill in my bathtub with, with it. Johnny Knoxville and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. And I would get into right it. And I would soak. Visuals. The, when the bus I pour a glass of wine, <laughs> lights the a candle, candle. <laughs> take a bath in the last stand. That's what I would do. You know what? I gotta give him props though, because this was be a shower a beautiful standing. film. Yeah, it looked good too. This, the whole this way. was yeah, and, that was a great. No, no. Yeah. So all joking aside, with Aaron, he nailed it. I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah, that it was a beautiful shot movie. Yeah, and that's why when I saw, I didn't know when I watched it until I went back and looked preparing for this that he'd only ever done this one movie in America and I'm right, right. a little bummed out about it because now that we can't go see his Korean movies if you like reading subtitles I know a little hard you hate that. that I just can't read that's, right. it's not about this I just read so slowly but, I end up not watching the movie it, it was good enough that makes me want to go see some of his other he stuff. needs it on though so that he can hear what people are saying right. what <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we got to just really quick talk about next week and what oh. we've got going on next Ooh, week. next week? Next week we're doing, uh, well, this is our first comic book movie since Green Lantern. Oh. Okay. Mm. We're going over to the other side. We're getting away from DC and we're going to Marvel. Barbie takes Manhattan? <laughs> no, we're talking about Captain America. Oh, the 1991? Yeah. Not oh, the one, I not can't be here the for that one. The one with Chris Evans. Oh. But the one with the with Matt Salinger. With a sweet <laughs> oh. Captain America helmet. Dude. Isn't there another Captain America coming out now? There, I don't know. There's yes. the Probably. female Captain America. Uh, who knows? But this is the one from 1990. This is pre MCU, pre oh. all that stuff. And I can't wait to talk about this movie. <sighs> I haven't seen it in 30 years. We watched this, me and my brother Bob, when it came out. In the early 90s. And I remember even then, as I a person too. that didn't know anything, thinking, this sucks. Nobody's seen it in 30 years. <laughs> if you guys want yeah. to watch this movie in advance of our review, the entire movie is on YouTube for free. <laughs> what That should tell you something right <laughs> That's there. That's how good can't it even, is. Can't even give it away. I own it on DVD. You own it on I DVD. Do. <laughs> well, you own Garbage Pail Kids on DVD. I own a yeah, lot of bad movies right. on DVD. <laughs> so... Go there, watch it. Hopefully it's still there by the time it's time for us to watch it. And otherwise, I'm going to be raiding Kurt's DVD collection to watch this thing. Right. But uh, join us next week, as always. We're just super appreciative that you guys are here listening with us. Thank you for joining us for The Last Stand. I don't know how on earth this thing was rotten, but I'm glad it was because it gave us a chance to talk about a good movie for it's a not change. not going to yeah. be anymore. Right? <laughs> We're fixing it. We're fixing it. So on, beha- on behalf of Kurt Mummer and Mel Vandy, Clint Bush, Ryan Mueller, I'm James Hauser. Thank you guys for listening. He's driving away trying to get to the border now. Arnold and Johnny with a lot of guns, pow. (laughs) Knoxville's got a big giant Nazi killer. Arnold's. We all got nothing. Don't let it die. (laughs) It's dead. (laughs) It died. No, it's not. We're here to build a bridge. Get the cross to the boy. <laughs> Flare <Wow>. gun. <laughs> this is, that was the worst ending we've ever done. Right, yeah. yeah. It's all right. I shouldn't. I should just not say anything. If you only knew what we cut out of that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bye.